will be by Reverend Kathleen Kate Morset Bobbitt from the Galilee Episcopal Church. Welcome. Not back to him. Yeah, they can hear you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in our city the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have the roll call? Yes, sir, Your Honor. All present. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have the uh, motion for the certification of the closed session. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. The vote is open. My vote of 10 to 0. You certify the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the informal and formal sessions of September 21st, 2021, and the special session of September 23rd, 2021. So moved. Second. All right. Vote is open. Okay, five, we have five out of ten to zero. We've approved the minutes as submitted. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have a crowded gallery today, so if it's okay, we're just going to move a few things on the agenda uh, forward. We have a very special presentation uh, to Mr. Wood, and then we're going to have the uh, quick public hearings, and then we're going to do the agenda, and then we wanted to devote the rest of the time, you know, for the public. Uh, comment on the candidate. So we're just going to bump you down a little bit. It should uh, should not be uh, that much of a time inconvenience. But at this point, Mr. Wood, will you please come forward? <clears throat> Jim. Resolution, whereas James L. Jim Wood graduated from Princess Anne High School in 1981 and earned a Bachelor of Science degree with special attainments in commerce from Washington and Lee in 1985, <coughs> and a Master's degree in history from Sam Houston University in 2016. And whereas Jim served as a Virginia Beach police officer assigned to various specialty units, including DUI enforcement and a precinct level anti-crime team. Where is Jim was elected to city council in 2002 and reelected four times as the Lynn Haven district representative. And in 2018 was elected and reelected in 2019 as vice mayor by the members of city council. And whereas Jim served as city council liaison to the audit committee, Bayfront advisory commission, board of building code of appeals, Domestic Violence Fatality Review Team, Green Ribbon Commission, Committee, Health Service Advisory Board, Military Economic Development Alliance Committee, Oceana Land Use Conformity Committee, Sister Cities Association of Virginia Beach, Virginia Aquarium and Marine Sciences Center Foundation, and the Volunteer Council. A lot of stuff. Whereas Jim was also commissioner and two-time past chairman of the Transportation District of Hampton Roads, HRT, was appointed by the Virginia Senate to Joint Subcommittee to address recurrent flooding. Whereas, Jim was a staunch supporter of the city's public safety agencies and tireless champion of the city's emergency medical, EMS, and volunteer rescue squads, where he was a frequent speaker at events and departmental awards programs, highlighting the council's support for the city's emergency medical responders. Whereas Jim was instrumental at crafting past two budgets and brokering support for the city's $2.2 billion budget, 
supporting the city's priorities without taxation or a fee increase. Now, to therefore it be resolved that the City of Virginia Beach Council hereby congratulate and offer sincere appreciation to James L. Jim Wood for his many achievements and honor in public ser and honor a public servant who deserves our deepest gratitude and respect for all he has done for the city of Virginia Beach and its citizens, given under our hand and signed by the entire city council. Well, it certainly is a true honor, and when you read all those things I did, now I realize why I have more time now. Um, it was certainly a humbling experience to serve on this body in, uh, a little over 19 years, and I, I went back and did some research on BBGov just to make sure my numbers were right. Uh, during that time, I served with 30 different council members, served with four mayors, three city managers and two interim city managers, two city attorneys, two city clerks. Um, two city assessors, one city auditor, because we created that during that time period. But I, I tell you, it's, it's interesting, you know, you, you have opportunity to meet a lot of people when you're on council. And in one of my nieces or nephews graduations, I got had the opportunity to meet Vice President Biden, pre President now. And I was introduced to him at, at that graduation. I remember he said, well, what do you do? And I said, I'm on the city council. He said, oh, I could never do that. That's the worst job in politics. <laughs> he, said, he said, people are really rough on local people. That's just the worst job. I don't know that he still thinks that, but you know, may maybe so. But you know, as, as you all know, it's, it's quite often a thankless job. Um, you know, certainly endure people you know, questioning your integrity on a daily basis and questioning your, your competence. But I will tell you that the members of the Virginia Beach City Council are, are some of the finest people that I've ever had an opportunity to work with. Uh, and Virginia Beach City employees are absolutely phenomenal, and they're, they're part of what makes Virginia Beach a great place. And Bobby mentioned the, um, Mayor Dyer mentioned the, uh, the information about the, how public safety and how I always bring them up, and I highlight, you know, public safety career and volunteer all the time. But, but the other folks, the folks that actually do all the other work, the people who pay the bills, who write the checks, who cut the grass, um, who do the books, fix the drains, sweep the floors, all of those people, they, they're all doing, um, they're all part of this great big machine that makes Virginia Beach the great city that it is. Um, I see former Mayor Sessoms is here and, and one of his statements that he always said is Virginia Beach is the greatest city in the world and, and it's because of the, uh, the, the efforts of, of our, our employees. So I wanna thank you all for this and wish you all well. I'm still in Virginia Beach and I still vote, so I'll be, I'll be watching you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you and uh, please sit around because in a little while we want you to watch uh, uh, the new vice mayor do the consent agenda, okay? Make, make sure you approve. <laughs> Okay, at this point, we're just gonna have, uh, we're gonna run through and do the uh, public hearings right now. Uh, number one uh, is the pro pro appropriation of funds for the American Rescue Plan Act. Any speakers? Yes, sir. The first speaker is Barbara Messner, and after Ms. Messner is John Zirkel. Mr. Dyer, you're fully aware that, you know, the procedure isn't when you advertise something, you're supposed to stick to it. As you know, the chair, I'd make it some discussion. I, I'm aware. Yes. I'm aware. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Messer. I, I'm aware. <clears throat> so since you've changed it around, Amanda, would you read it again? Because I was getting ready We're for the We're on public hearings, ma'am. Pardon? Public hearings. Right. Which one? Is it? There's two. Okay, all of them? Number one. Number one, appropriation of funds from the American Rescue Plan okay. Act. All right. Um, <coughs> this is federal money that goes to the state that comes here. You've been using federal money and state money after the mass shooting, preventable mass shooting, 
and you've been using COVID money, COVID cares, which no one is really overseeing. And now you're gonna use more money and you're paying your own bills with this, bills that you, we have $3 billion debt. So I, I oppose you using all this money to pay your bills that y'all haven't managed. That's why we have $3 billion debt. And I do think it's illegal to have, for you to have signs out there advertising all over the city for a bond referendum. It's just like a candidate. You can't advertise for different candidates. Okay, two, acquisition. No, ma'am. We have more speakers on one. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next speaker is John Zirkel. After Mr. Zirkel is Jimmy Capps. <clears throat> Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor Wilson, and City Council. Uh, I'm John Zirkel. I'm the president of the Virginia Beach Hotel Association. Uh, and before I get into the ERP request, I do want to thank you all for your support of our industry. Uh, your early uh, increase of the funding for marketing the city when the pandemic first hit was extraordinary and really helped our industry. Uh, that, uh, plus the training and hiring assistance and the uh, incentives for workers. So thank you. I'm here to follow up, though, on the ARP request. Uh, the COVID pandemic has hit the tourism industry uh, harder than any other industry. Uh, of my association, 70 plus hotels, a majority were down 50% uh, in 2020 compared to 2019. Uh, and the number doesn't take, uh, excuse me, the city's finance office reported uh, hotel room revenue was down $50 million in 2020. That doesn't take into account the catering and event revenue that hotels lost as well. It also doesn't take into account the two new hotels that opened in 2020 that created revenue in 20, even though it was lower, but were not open in 2019. Uh, there's also the, the challenge with not being able to host events uh, due to the mandates. We couldn't host meetings, family reunions, weddings, uh, corporate events. Uh, those things definitely hurt us. And during the crisis, hotels have seen labor costs and cost of goods grow by 15% and more. Uh, we've continued to suffer staffing shortages. And while our industry did have a very good summer of 2021, June, July, and August were very good months for us. Uh, they didn't come close to making up for the enormous losses we experienced in 2020 and the first half of 21. Uh, the bad news is the Delta variant is still very prevalent. Uh, we've seen a significant drop in business since summer ended already. Uh, so we're not seeing that come back just yet. Uh, with the state of Virginia having uh, failed to live up to its promise to assist our industry, we need our city now more than ever. Uh, other cities in Virginia, Maryland, even Washington, D.C. have provided direct ARP assistance. We hope Virginia Beach does as well. Uh, I thank you for your time, and I thank you for your continued support of the hospitality industry. Thank you. The next speaker is Jimmy Capps. After Mr. Capps is Mark DeRoche. Welcome, Mr. Capps. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'm Jimmy Capps. I own, with my wife, the Breakers Resort Inn located at 16th Street in Oceanfront in Virginia Beach. We operate a small mom and pop operation. I come tonight to ask for your support for the hospitality industry when you decide the American Rescue Plan. Hotel sales were very good during the 2021 season. Many factors contributed to this successful season. Pinned up demand uh, by the traveling public, the city advertising, our location proximity to the Northeast. We are a drive-in market. We are all having difficulty with budgeting for the 2022 season. Will the demand be as great? Can we continue to raise rates to cover increased expenses? 2021 was a very difficult season to operate. Staffing was difficult. My family and several loyal employees worked lots of overtime hours to get us through the pandemic. Housekeeping say, uh, expenses were up 30% and staffing was up 9.1%. Operating costs were up 10 to 15 percent. We've operated a small hotel and have been in business for 30 plus years, and our mortgage is low and manageable. 
I can only imagine what the debt service is on the new hotels in, on Atlantic Avenue with 200 plus rooms. I ask for your consideration when you decide how to <coughs> dispense the American Rescue Plan of funds for an industry that makes up one third of our city economy. Just think about us and think about what we do and uh, how much we work to make hospitality what it is in Virginia Beach. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Mark DeRoche and then Pete Nixon. Pete Nixon. And then Dennis Stebbins will be next. Good evening. Good evening, folks. I'm here to ask for your support for the use of these funds for the regional stormwater project proposed uh, in the uh, area of the new Sportplex Center. Uh, I'm a property owner, and my family has owned property in the 600 block of 17th Street for since the early 50s. And the uh, stormwater problems have increased down there over the last couple of decades due to collapse of the pipe system and whatnot. Um, I've been involved in the stormwater projects in the state of Virginia since 1993 when Councilwoman Nancy Parker and I were appointed to uh, the Regulations Review Committee when the Chesapeake Bay Act was first instituted. And the whole idea of the Bay Act and the stormwater fees was to establish these type facilities where the cities would, the Bay Watershed communities would establish, uh, implement, and build stormwater retention and filtering systems, which has really not happened. This is the first time I've seen this happen, and I'm very enthused about this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Dennis Stebbins. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. My name is Dennis Stebbins. I'm Business Development Manager for the Greenleaf and Pebble Tea Spas here in Virginia Beach. We have two of them and one cafe as well. I'm talking about uh, tonight the uh, Restaurant Revitalization Fund that was in effect earlier this year. Uh, my wife solely owns all of our businesses, and we applied on the first day that it was open. We were accepted. Uh, for the grant that we were looking for, the two grants, which totaled about $400,000, we were told and emailed by the Small Business Administration that we, uh, our checks were being mailed, ACHs, to our banks, and had already been sent. And then we heard nothing from the SBA after that. It took six more weeks before we finally found out, after many, many calls, the SBA, who refused to answer any calls, that... Uh, they had gone broke, and that the, um, <laughs> uh, what can I say, the, um, the major players had been uh, subject to court battles in Texas and Arkansas, and uh, because of discrimination facts. It was open for the first week for women, uh, for the uh, disadvantaged individual, and for military. We applied right away and got the grant, but we were denied it, and we have never received the funds yet. And on behalf of the National Restaurant Association and the Virginia Beach Restaurant Association, I wish to present that as a trouble that I've talked to many restaurant owners about, and many people in this community have the same problem, as well as across the country. So we hope that we can get some help from the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mark DeRoche. Mayor, that's all the speakers on this public hearing. Okay, thank you. Um, item number two, acquisition by agreement or uh, condemnation of temporary and permanent easements at Thalia Creek Greenway Phase Three Project CIP 100415, formerly CIP number 4-079, and then temporary permanent easements necessary for Sandbridge Road, Nemo Parkway, Phase 7A CIP 10035, uh, formerly CIP number 2078. 
we have one speaker for each of those. Barbara Messner. Um, I oppose eminent domain in acquiring uh, property. Um, in 2012, the eminent domain, which is abused for the 31st Street Hotel, um, was changed. And you're basically um, operating as a real estate brokers in buying and, and taking land for projects that you failed to fix for decades. Some people ran on, um, you know, fixing the infrastructure. We've had um, Hurricane Matthew, you know, the sewage spills, that was caused by, you know, the pump station on Laskin Road, which contaminated the water. We've had the jet fuel spill, which was, you know, um, Anyway, I oppose I to uh, pose this, and I also want to mention that um, on the Rescue Act, people asking for the money, the hotels are private. They're private. Some people survive and others are failing. Um, Chick-fil-A, Waterman's, all those are making more money than they were before. Okay, thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, at this point, we're going to move on to, uh, uh, before we get to the consent agenda, the speaker's policy. I want to remind everyone that the city council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal portion of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by the council at the time you are called. When speakers are called on each item, the, uh, the clerk will call those individuals who have signed up to speak. We have several items with one, only one speaker signed up. As such, the city clerk will call the speaker and identify each item that has been registered on. The speaker will receive three minutes to comment on each item. Again, the speaker must limit his or her comments to the subject matter of the items they have signed up to address. Finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussion and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the City Council wants to hear from you and ensure that all viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way to do this is to uh, strive for civility and respect. Madam Clerk, can you uh, please call the one item um, agenda for ordinances and res resolutions? Barbara Messner. Ms. Messner, at this point, the only items that Ma'am, the only items that are on consent are number three and number eight. So three and eight are pulled. Okay. I thought with all the uh, candidates I'd have more time to prepare. That's why I really re don't appreciate you changing the agenda to meet, you know. Okay, one. Ordinance to add chapter 3.5 city code Commercial property assessed clean energy. How can we have clean energy in a dirty, crime-ridden city? Uh, none of the things that you've done, you spent billions, literally billions over the decades, and nothing works. Um, you know, you say you have clean buildings, you build retention ponds to hold all the overflow. Um, resiliency. I mean, the wording and everything. Um, and this is proposed by uh, Vice Mayor Wilson, uh, Mr. Berlucci, I've seen you on TV, and Mr. Tower. So I oppose changing our ordinances. Um, 
nonstop to meet your development needs and your CIP needs. We used to have bids on things. Now it's CIP. You just and then you pick who you want to to develop. And in speaking of who you pick and zoning permits, I sent y'all pictures of um, the dumpster fire by Buffalo Wild Wings, which was in the street and it was rusty. They painted it with green paint. And and I went by and it's it's still being used. That place it stinks all around there. And you have no one does anything about zoning or permits. The city is a mess and y'all act like it's wonderful. Okay. Two. Should I wait until y'all are finished with your side? Go right ahead. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> oh, and you took down the uh, the plexiglass, which is great. You know. Thank you. Yeah, that was. That's, we can communicate now. So. Oh, yeah. I, I know y'all. <laughs> plenty of time to communicate. Okay, to ordinance to amend uh, section 2.51 of the city code to the members of the historical review board. Um, with professional training or equivalent experience in certain related fields. You know, historical used to be to protect property, not to flip it into a giant brewery. I've never seen so many breweries in my life, and most of them, there, there were over 200 several years ago. Um, and some people who have older homes, you know, they get tax breaks too because you declare it histor um, historical. So, you know, that's, that's another, in my opinion, scam, in my personal opinion, which I'm entitled to. Okay, four, ordinance to <clears throat> authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city right-of-way known as Marlin Lane, adjacent to uh, Sand Fiddler Road, retain and maintain 15 trees and four bushes. I, I mean, these token little trees and things, he took an entire square mile of woods and land for the um, sports center, which was originally the uh, arena deal, which you, uh, our candidate that was always, you know, responsible for finance, he didn't have a problem with the 78 million going for parks and parking, going to another project instead of going back to the taxpayers. Okay, five, resolution to add student members to the Virginia Beach Clean Community Commission. Um, you've also added students. You know, I, the swamp thing that, you know, plays over and over that Miss Wooten runs, you know, you've, you know, small women owned businesses. Um, I mean, most of these are not small businesses, and there are vendors there that run the show and they sell their books, and now you've added vets and, um, and TCC, and I forget the other one, and students. The students don't vote. It's their parents' responsibility to get involved. We need adults, you know, to show up and fight for the kids, and we need for people to be responsible and not have so many conflicts. <clears throat> okay, six. Resolution to provide for May 31st Memorial Committee membership and responsibilities. So May 31st, I assume, is the uh, mass shooting for May 31st, 2019. Um, and Mr. Nixon and several of those people have been, you know, we all spoke. There were three of us that spoke. Debbie Verado spoke by WebEx and Jason spoke and I spoke and you're paying for all for other people to do it the victim families are the ones that should decide where the memorial is and what they want you've already wasted money it's, it's air money and some of it came from the VB strong which 
you know, all that money went to moving people around the city over to Sabre Road and everything, helping select developers who own that property, property owners. So a resolution, um, I don't know, I don't, like I said. Okay, seven, authorize the city manager. <clears throat> Where's the city manager today? Yeah, he's on WebEx. Oh, he's on WebEx. Good evening, uh, Mr. Jehaney. Authorize the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding uh, with Atlantic Preservation LP and accept and appropriate 25,000 donation from Atlantis Preservation LP to the 2021 through 2022 Parks and Rec operating budget to implement programming for residents of Atlantis apartments. I mean, there's problems all over the city, all over the city. This is, you know, this is ridiculous. You're, you're buying that land and you're flipping it to something else. You know, gentrification where the people who live there can't really afford to move back. Just like after Matthew, those people, you know, they weren't able to move back. The landlord decided he wanted to do something else with the property. Okay. Skip eight. Nine, award 5,000 community service micro grant to the Hispanic Resource Center of Coastal Virginia. Whatever happened to Hampton Roads? We had the Hampton Road show, but you know, to support Hispanic Heritage Celebration, requested by Mr. Bellucci. Um, you know, this is America. We all used to get along. You have, you have all this stuff and you, you pander, you cater to certain groups for votes. It's outrageous. Um, it's not your job to do social events it's your job to keep the city safe. Why didn't somebody say a prayer about the person that was killed, you know, in that horrific accident over Great Neck? Air roads are deplorable. We've done nothing about the roads and safety. The police are at the oceanfront. And in Princess Anne Indy, which I glanced at real quick, they listed how many crimes are there in September. Hit and run. Um, auto theft, fraud, everything under the sun. So all the money you're spending for the police, you know, it's not stopping crime and it hasn't stopped crime since, uh, since the 90s. Okay, 10, ordinance to accept uh, 42,700 from criminal justice services for 2021-2022 Human Services Operating Budget, Ray Human Services Community Corrections and Pretrial Service Division. We have a budget. You're supposed to budget for these things. You're not supposed to shift the money around. Um, we're, we're up for another budget and you've moved the money all over the place. Okay. And I do not think it's legal for you to have those giant signs that, that we're paying for, you're using our money to pay for, for the referendum. This is, it's even in our water bill. This is phase one. Uh, only 567 million for phase one. And some of it won't be paid for 95 years. 95 year late management, 95 year, you know, Who's going to be here then? Okay, it's on, on budget. Stop. Uh, I know it's, you know, they close in on y'all, but it's distant for me, so you can't really see this. Stop restricted access to city government 
public beaches. I mean, why do we need to parking and towing in the off season? Um, stop corporate welfare, taxing the poor and middle class for private developers and their pet banks. Uh, and I already said welcome to Mr. Sessoms. <laughs> and, you know, I said this before, you know, if people really cared and showed up and knew what was going on with their money, they could recall for malfeasance, <clears throat> but not enough people care. Thank you. Okay, uh, public hearing on planning items. All the planning items are on consent. Which means no one's here? Just you to speak. You know, I, like I said, I don't appreciate the fact that you moved everything around. But since I'm the only one, okay, so planning. All these people online that, that post and act like they care and everything. Uh, you know, what's on the record is what matters. Whether you vote for or against something, people know how you vote. And when you, when Mr. Dyer, when you and Ms. Henley have left without voting and you know, and you say that you're absent when you've abstained, it's not clear in the record. So I have an issue with the, with the records in the minutes. And you overwork the clerks. So they don't keep up with. Um, A lot of people overwork the clerk. <laughs> and, and, the most, uh, and the clerk gets over 100,000 plus, you know. <coughs> but, you know, that's their choice. I'm glad you think it's funny. I saw the picture of you with the Wawa and all those people out front, ribbon cutting, you know, social butterfly, but you don't have time to answer emails or take care of crime. <laughs> okay, um, planning. Lynn Haven Dive Center, LLC, Blue Water Properties, LLC, SLMD, LLC, and this, you know, like I said, the agenda is 208 pages. We don't get it till after 5 on Friday usually, sometimes a little bit earlier. That's not true. So the agenda brief should have more information, you know, instead of just all these initials. Just like I, I finally got the uh, swearing in, you know, and the information that I wanted beforehand, you know, this afternoon. And a lot of the documents are not properly signed. It's your full name, Robert M. Parentheses Bobby Dyer, uh, Rosemary Caps Wilson. So when you sign something and it's not witnessed by the clerk and by other people, it's not really a legal document, in my opinion and in other people's opinion. Because y'all were changing it for a while and you moved back. Okay, Which conditional name? use, Was vocational it? school, another school. Um, North Great Neck Road. So the Linton Haven Dive Center has had some issues. Okay, so that light is for one. Okay, I'm ready to go to two. Go ahead. Okay, if you want to turn off the light. Go ahead. <coughs> if you can turn off go the light. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right. TVT1 LLC, DBA Tower Ventures, care of Lou Kotzerman, Pleasant Valley Associate. Modification of communications tower at Pleasant Valley in Centerville. Okay, and I spoke to the gentleman, so I'm just gonna uh, Take my comments because a lot of people used to come and speak about the cell towers and the problems. Some of the problems are with Dominion. And even though they say, oh, you know, cell towers don't have radiation, they do. Um, and I believe it's supposed to look like a tree. It's like, you know, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. We don't need cell towers on top of cell towers on top of cell towers. And <clears throat> okay. Three. You 
Yvonne Lee Hypes, Lucas and Esther, uh, Diane Schneider, co-executrix of the estate. <coughs> anyway, it doesn't matter who they are. Conditional change in zoning from B neighborhood business to R five residential resort district single family dwelling. Okay. Um, with all the problems we have with short-term rentals, I don't know what this conditional use thing is for. It doesn't matter. Some of the other ones are for, um, but you don't have enough. Miss Henley used to bring it up all the time. We don't have enough police. You're shorthanded. You, you, all this money that you're paying for these lawsuits and, and outside law firms. Um, so until you have enough police and, and the health department, now you have an interim one that was the original one, I think Nancy Welch, and before that you had somebody that was the health director for Norfolk and Virginia Beach, so, you know, the whole, whole thing of oversight is, is a big problem. Okay, Janetta White. Family daycare in Kempsville. Okay, and I brought this up before. There's, you know, somebody needs to um, go out there and check all these places. There's been a lot of problems. You know, the, the average citizen can't go out and check on all these things. It's your duty. How many of y'all have gone out there to check on this personally? Um, Okay, five, amend Sydney City Ordinance, Section 602, Dimensional Requirements in Apartment Districts. Uh, we should have more time to, to reach y'all and ask questions and reach, you know, a lot of times when I call, it's, you know, voicemail, you know, People don't answer like they used to, and everyone isn't in an office. And with the, with the pandemic, you know, people are at all different locations all over the city, Sabre Road. Um, so, yeah, I oppose zoning ordinances changes. We have uh, zoning ordinances for a reason. Okay, B, 1306. <coughs> Um, add assembly use, conditional use, historic and cultural districts. You know, our entire city is one big party. You know, you, the Vibe District, one of the candidates um, running for office, you know, started the entire thing with y'all, um, which is subsidized by the city and the state equally. We, we pay for it. And there's a lot of alcohol, there's been a lot of crime that's moved back. The police you know, can take care of generally the oceanfront. But when you make the Vibe District everything between 17th Street and, um, and 19th Street, basically from Alaskan Road and all the way back to Birdneck, the police can't handle all of that. So, um, you know, all this cultural district stuff. It's not your job to be social engineers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go to the consent agenda now, and I'm going to ask uh, Madam Vice Mayor, there is an ad on it, and I'm going to ask her to read the entire uh, ad. I think we got a vote to add it to the con consent agenda. So we, add, we do the add on first, or? Do, do, there will need to be a motion to add the item to the agenda for consideration, and then uh, it can be placed on the consent agenda okay. if that's the will of the body. So, so go ahead and read the entire So thing. I'm going to read our add-on. Uh, this is a resolution renaming the Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station as the James L. Wood Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station.
Whereas former Vice Mayor James L. Wood was first elected to the City Council in 2002 and was re-elected four times as the Lynn Haven District Representative, and in 2018 he was elected as Vice Mayor by the members <coughs> of the City Council. Whereas Wood is a 1981 graduate of Princess Anne High School, whereas after graduating from Washington and Lee University in 1985, he began his career in public service as a Virginia Beach police officer and was assigned to various specialty units, including DUI enforcement and a precinct level anti-crime team. Whereas during his tenure on the city council, Wood was a staunch supporter of the city's public safety agencies and a tireless champion of the city's emergency medical services, EMS, and volunteer rescue squad squads, successfully advocating for resources to support volunteer operations, recruiting, retention, and training. Whereas Wood was a frequent speaker at rescue squad events and departmental award programs, highlighting the council's support for the, Virginia, for the city's emergency <coughs> medical responders. Whereas one of Wood's many actions in support of emergency medical services in the city was his bringing forward of the concept of converting the former Thalia volunteer fire station into an EMS station. Whereas in large part due to his efforts, the city council in 2014 funded the convention, excuse me, the conversion of the fire station to become the Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station, <coughs> the first city owned standalone EMS station in Virginia Beach. And it quickly became one of the most active in the city, improving response times and providing critical support to its primary service area of Thalia, town center, and adjoining neighborhood and also supporting three neighboring stations, Plaza, Davis Corner, and Kempsville. And whereas the city council wishes to express its deep appreciation for former Vice Mayor Wood's decades of exemplary public service to the city by renaming the Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station in his honor. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council, the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. We have a motion for the add-on. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Well, we've still got some more. Okay. Turn it over. Well, we need. Uh oh. <laughs> that the Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station, located at 333 Thalia Road, is hereby named as James L. Wood Thalia Emergency Medical Services Station, and that the city manager is hereby directed to take all steps necessary to revise signage for the facility and all other references to the facility to include this new name. Okay, we have a motion and a second for an add-on. Okay, vote is open. Five vote at 10 to zero. This has been added to the consent agenda. Okay. <laughs> okay, Madam Clerk, do we have, or, uh, Madam Vice Mayor, do we have a uh, motion on the consent do agenda? Do you want me to read it? Uh, well, yeah, go ahead and read the... Uh, Entire okay. right under ordinances situation. resolutions number one is the ordinance to add chapter 13.5 of the city code sections regard commercial property around clean energy c pace financing and resiliency program number two, number two the ordinance to amend section 25.1 of the city code regarding the members of the historical review board with professional training or equivalent experience in certain related fields number four Ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city right away known as Marlin Lane adjacent to 2477 Sand Fiddle Road to retain and maintain 15 trees and four bushes. Number five, resolution to add student members to the Virginia Beach Clean Community Commission. Number six, resolution to provide for May 31st Memorial Committee membership and responsibilities. Number seven is ordinance regard authorize the City Manager to execute a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with Atlantis Preservation LP and accept and appropriate a $25,000 donation from Atlantis Preservation LP to the FY 2021-22 Parks and Recreation Operating Budget as to implement programming for residents of the Atlantis Apartments. Number nine, the ordinance to award a 5,000 Community Service Micro Grant to the Hispanic Resource Center of Coastal Virginia in support of the Hispanic Heritage Celebration. And number 10 is the ordinance to accept $42,709 from the Department of Criminal Justice Services to the FY 2021-22 
Human Services Operating Budget regarding Human Service Community Correction and Pretrial Services Division. Number 11 is our add-on. And I open a public hearing on planning. Number one is the Lynn Haven Dive Center LLC slash Blue Water Properties LLC and SLMD LLC. And that is in the Lynn Haven District. Number two is the TBT I LLC DBA Tower Ventures CO Lou Cattersman and Pleasant Valley Associates LLC and that's in Centerville District. Number three is Yvonne Lee Hypes Lucas and Esther Diane Schneider co-executrixes of the estate of Verenia Craig Hypes Ryan for change of zoning from B1 Neighborhood Business District to R5R Residential Resort D District regards single family dwelling at 4504 Guam Street, and that is in Bayside. Number four is Janita White for conditional use permit regarding a family daycare home at 1109 Malcolm's Way, and that is in Kempsville. And then number five is the ordinance to amend the city zoning ordinances of section 602 regarding dimensional requirements in apartment districts, and B, section 1306 regarding ad assembly uses as conditional uses in historic and cultural districts. Motion? Second. Okay. First. Okay. Great. Okay. Vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 0, you've approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wilson, including the add on. And Mr. Wood, we got you. Thanks for sticking around. All right, and this is a secret, a secret in this town. <laughs> All right, once again, uh, congratulations, but also to the Wood family and friends. Uh, you were very part, uh, much part of uh, what Jim was able to do for us. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay, at this point, we're just gonna, we got two items that we have to hear, and that would be ordinance number three, ordinance to authorize the acquisition of uh, property and fee simple for the construction of a city operated dredge transfer station to serve the Eastern Branch Lynn Haven River Dredging Project, CIP 100 152, either by agreement or condemnation. The first speaker is Frank uh, Grizel. Frank Grizel. And then the next speaker is Fred Worcester. Good evening. I am Frank Gerziel, Chairman of the Dredging Committee for Chesapeake Colony. I am here to express my community's support for the acquisition of the property at 2540 Virginia Beach Boulevard for construction of a dredge transfer station for the eastern branch of the Lynn Haven River. The public hearing identified the navigation and safety issues that exist on the eastern branch of the Lynn Haven. It is clear that we need this transfer station now to enable the city to meet its commitment to maintain safe navigation on the river. But what may be less clear is the source of frustration for the community. Let me share three key numbers. 30 years since the river was last dredged over 10 years actively looking for an acceptable location for dredging. And now based on comments at the public hearing, over one year of discussion between the owner and city staff on the possible use of the, this location. Where's the sense of urgency? That's a frustration for the community. The community has lost another year. Of particular concern was the suggestion that the owners wanted to consider having co-tenants on the property. In my opinion, this is a very bad idea. The community's primary need is to have a site available for dredging the river and the ancillary community dredging projects that have queued up. It needs to be designed with a focus on the safety and efficiency of the transfer process in mind. The sealed dump trucks involved are large and have a limited turning radius. They need room to maneuver. They also need space to queue up off the public thoroughfare while they wait to be loaded. They can't wait on Virginia Beach Boulevard. This is a problem a good engineering design can solve if we don't congest the site with other tenants in their cars. Job number one for this property is to take care of the dredging problem. We should not be distracted or delayed. 
We request you approve this resolution today. Thank you for your attention and support. Thank you. Fred Worcester, and then after Mr. Worcester is uh, Barbara Messner. Hello, my name is Fred Worcester. I'm representative of the Coastal Virginia Community Rowing Club. We're a nonprofit organization that was founded by members and coaches of the high school rowing clubs at Cox, Princess Anne, and the First Colonial High Schools in 2020. One of the primary goals of our organization is to expand the sport of rowing to all interested athletes at all high schools in the city of Virginia Beach. Um, to that end, we've organized training programs on the water and their island training conditions, or training programs for students in Virginia Beach since the spring of 2021. Uh, we've had student, over 100 students participate in those programs from nine high schools in Virginia Beach. Based on the community response to our programs, we feel very uh, positive about the potential to grow the sport here in Virginia Beach and expand it to all students in the city. Um, I want to take a moment to thank the Department of Public of Parks and Recreation. Our program has been working collaboratively with, with them at the Thalia Creek launch site, adjacent to the Thalia Creek dredge transfer station. We really appreciate the support they provided for our on the water rowing, use of that facility for our on the water rowing programs and hope to continue that collaboration with them in the future. However, based on the response that we're seeing from uh, the interest in our program, we anticipate outgrowing that site in the next five years, which has brought us to the owners of this current property in question. They reached out to us. They offered to let us use the property as a backup rowing venue to the Thalia Creek launch. Uh, our coaches have evaluated the site. We think it's very suitable and viable as a rowing venue. And um, it's both north and south of Virginia Beach Boulevard. And its central location is very attractive in terms of accessibility for all students in Virginia Beach. Um, now I'm not familiar with uh, the ramifications of your del deliberations tonight. I'm simply here to let you all know that there are citizens in the community who participate in this, this rowing, uh, competitive rowing, who find that this particular site has the potential to be an excellent venue for supporting uh, rowing programs in Virginia Beach. So I'm just requesting that you consider the potential for dual uses of the property uh, in your deliberations and um, appreciate your time. <coughs> If you have any questions, I'd be happy yeah, to take them. Yeah, Mr. Moss. Uh, I appreciate you said you might outgrow the site. Does that mean your organization no, only, no longer has interest in the property that was set aside for use for construction of a storage facility? No, not at all. No, we, we absolutely have interest. Our concern at this time is that given the level of interest we're seeing among the students, there are some limitations on that property um, in terms of the the overall size of it and the number of boats that can be stored there, as well as the, um, the waterway itself in terms of the number of boats that can migrate up and down. Thank you. I thought you wanted to retain it, but I just wanted to make sure that was true. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you. anyone else? Oh, thank you. The next speaker is Barbara Messner. Maybe we could have, you know, breaks in between so people can don't have to get up and leave while we're speaking. Oh, I know. Um, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. You know, some one of the reasons that the um, the media brings their microphone is because it's too low. And Miss Barnes was nice enough to tell me when she turned your speakers up and down at the convention center. She doesn't have that ability here. You're responsible for turning it up so people can hear. It's like a whisper. Even the last speaker, it's a whisper. So we're, we're being restricted information when you whisper and you don't uh, have working microphones. 
Okay. Um, acquisition of property. Fee simple. Um, Eastern Branch for dredging. You know, I was here when you know you made the deal with Chesapeake and Colony, and they had to sue. But what good is it to dredge when you don't do anything about the uncontrolled growth, people dumping things, you know, polluting the rivers? Um, it's just never ending. There's still problems with uh, Chesapeake and Colony, um, and it it spreads everywhere. So um, CIP, taxpayer money, it doesn't grow on the trees that you're chopping down. You break it, you should fix it. Thank you. Call the speaker, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, at this point, do we have a motion on this? So moved. We have a motion and we have a second. second. Any other discussion? Vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 0, you've you have adopted the ordinance. Okay, the fi uh, final item uh, is ordinance to authorize $200,000 grant to the Hampton Roads Workforce Council for a mental health worker recruitment and retention bonuses. We have two speakers. Barbara Messner is the first speaker, and after Ms. Messner is Curtis Hooks. Uh, workforce council and you have workforce housing it's like if things were affordable and we didn't have so much crime and lack of enforcement and patrolling in all neighborhoods you would you can't keep creating councils and uh, committees and all this stuff mental health you you used air money not air money VB strong money that was supposed to go to the victim families, uh, 12 victim families, um, and to the memorial, but you use it for everything else. Um, you have the VB Strong Center. You have human services that has a lot of problems. That was even identified by Hillard Hines. Toxic work environment. And people are stressed. You know, they can, they can, their kids can play sports, but they can't go to school without wearing a mask and uh, worrying about, you know, how, how they, they and their parents are treated. So, you know, the city council uses air tax dollars, air attorneys to help the school board. So it does, you know, what you do does affect the schools and the workforce. You know, I saw the building that you have. There's no parking. People don't want to work at the oceanfront because of crime, wearing masks, and, and there's no parking. All the parking's for yourself uh, and special interest. And entertainment, it's not your job to entertain. I work for Whisper Concerts and Cellar Door. You know, you, they used to pay for the entertainment in all these places where, you know, you're doing it outside. You're allowing our beaches, their boardwalks, their sidewalks, everything to be entertainment venues and, you know, against the state law, which y'all, you know, you know, you're not supposed to serve and consume alcohol in public. That's why you have the cafes, and that's why when you approve it, they fund you. So this is um, requested as if you have nothing else to do by the mayor, Ms. Wilson, Mr. Berlucci, Mr. Holcomb, and Ms. Wooten. Um, so, 200,000 is a lot of money for a grant, you know, when we have, we have debt and serious problems. And you, you built something at um, Virginia Marine Science Museum, aquarium, you keep changing the name. Um, and then you have shuttles for those people. You don't have shuttles for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Curtis Hooks. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? Good evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, 
Council members, uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak with you in regards to uh, the behavioral health crisis here in the Commonwealth that has a devastating impact here in our local community as well. Um, my name is Kurt Hooks. I'm the CEO of Virginia Beach Psychiatric Center. We're the largest freestanding acute behavioral health facility in the Commonwealth outside of the state hospitals. Um, I want to start by sincerely expressing gratitude for the efforts of um, our, our public servants in regards to raising awareness around mental health issues uh, during this critical period, and we're proud to participate in many of those efforts um, at our facility. Uh, I've been a mental health provider in a variety of capacities for 21 years in this region, myself being a licensed clinician here in Virginia. I have never experienced or seen anything in the range of what the current behavioral health crisis is now. In the latter part of July this year, Behavioral Health Commissioner of Virginia declared a state of emergency and closed all the state psychiatric facilities for admissions due to severe and escalating direct care staffing shortages. At one point in time, they had called the National Guard. As the chair of the Behavioral Health Committee for the Virginia Healthcare and Hospital Association, I have been heavily engaged in this issue for our with our legislature and stakeholders across the healthcare systems. Uh, due to the severe workforce shortages, emergency behavioral health is far more difficult to access than ever before. As the capacity to keep beds open has been reduced in facilities like ours in the state facilities due to insufficient staffing. At the same time, the demand for such services has significantly increased as there's been sustained uncertainty, uncertainty and amplified stress due to the pandemic. This demand is projected to continue to increase and continue to escalate as the projection for providers to leave the healthcare workforce also continues. The impacts and repercussions are far ranging. Any given day here in Virginia Beach, there are multiple scenarios in which individuals are waiting for acute psychiatric treatment in emergency departments for several hours, days, and sometimes even longer. It's inhumane. Um, in my opinion, it's unacceptable. Many of these individuals are held under involuntary orders so the emergency departments, accompanying law, law enforcement uh, providers, and city mental health providers all bear an increased workload, system strain, resource depletion, all because of these bed capacity shortages due to insufficient staffing. Resources that can assist in helping keep beds open doesn't solve a problem this large and complex, but it helps everyone across the multitude of stakeholders to alleviate this emergency system strain. Resource, resourcing for providers, regardless of public or private status, is critical and needed for providers to work together to address this emergency while also implementing sustainable solutions. And this can't wait. We can and must do better because, most importantly, this is about safety and dignity for the individ individuals in desperate and immediate need of mental health services. Thank you time. very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. That's all the speaker, sir. Okay. At this point, do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bellucci. I would like to move for approval, and I'd like to just share a few thoughts, if, if, if I may. Okay. Let's get the second, then we'll open up for discussion. I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, first, I'd like to begin by thanking Mr. Hooks for being here this evening, and also by just recognizing the efforts that he's made as a private citizen, as a mental and behavioral health professional in our community and our city to raise awareness about this issue and to provide critical access to services that our neighbors need, are in need of. And also I'd like to just tip my hat and pay tribute to everyone uh, who also is in the mental and, he and behavioral health field, both public and nonprofit providers, for their professional and excellent services. Um, I really could just, um, could just stop based on what Mr. Hook shared with us today, but uh, at the risk of, um, of uh, adding unnecessary information, I'd like to, to just share a few thoughts about, about where this proposal came from and why I think it's so critical and necessary. Uh, first, I'd just like to explain what it is. It's a $200,000 grant in partnership with the Hampton Roads Workforce Council, um, which would be accessible to private and nonprofit mental and behavioral health care professionals um, to support the critical staffing um, shortages that they're experiencing. It is in no way meant to um, compete or to impact the public service and municipal sector, uh, which you heard our manager last week share with you that there's a, a similar program being activated, which would allow the city to compete above and beyond what this program is proposing. And in fact, this council authorized recruitment and retention bonuses for human services employees 
earlier this year. Um, so you heard from Mr. Hooks tonight. You received a letter from NAMI Coastal Virginia, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, explaining their support for this proposal. You also received a letter from the uh, Professional Association of Virginia Beach Police Officers, who explained their support for the program and how it, it affects their work. You received feedback from members of our Human Rights Commission, and you heard Dr. Ross Hammond earlier this evening discuss that mental health was identified as the number one priority for the IDEA Commission and why. And so I would just uh, simply and respectfully ask for your support today. We did, had a robust discussion earlier. I think it was a healthy conversation. What I did think it re revealed was our shared commitment to working on this issue. Um, but I also think it revealed that we can't afford to wait. It's going to take time to develop and stand up this program with the Hampton Roads Workforce Council. I think we should authorize this program this evening and give the Workforce Council time. And our neighbors and residents, they can't afford for us to wait to act. The time to act is now. You know, when the earlier discussions about um, some of the questions and potential objections to the program came up, I called someone in our city who I have a lot of respect for, and I was really frustrated at the time. And, um, and, and that person shared with me, I said, you know, this is just a small thing. It's not, it's $200,000 grant in the scope of what we do. It's not a major project. It's not a $300 million development proposal. It's a small thing. And I was frustrated why um, such a small thing would be, uh, would be so difficult to achieve. And that person reminded me nothing is small. It's the small things that matter. It's the small things that make an impact on our neighborhoods and our families. It's the small things that we do here gets the job done and makes Virginia Beach an incredible place to live. So I'm asking you to do a small thing that has a big impact for our community and pass this ordinance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. The motion to approve. By a vote of 10 to 0, you've approved the ordinance. Okay, thank you all very much. Okay, we are ready. Okay, the next is going to be public comment. Thank you for your uh, patience, uh, folks in the gallery, for allowing us to get through to city business first and really focus on. We're very excited uh, that you're here and anxious to hear what you have to say. So at this point, let's open it up to public comments for the candidates for the Lynn Haven vacancy. Linwood Branch, Holly Cuellar, Carla Hesseltein, Tyne and uh, Richard Maddox. Okay, first uh, first speaker, please. First speaker is uh, Rona Marsh. And then Welcome, after, Rona. And after Mrs. Marsh is Will Sessa. Good evening, Mayor Dyer. Good evening, Vice Mayor Wilson, and all esteemed council members. I am here to speak about Lynn Haven. I live in Lynn Haven. I've lived in Lynn Haven since 2007. You have a handout from me that is about one of the candidates with lots of red circles on it. And I will get to that after I say some nice things about the candidate that I am strongly supporting, which is Holly Cuellar. I want to point out there are seven men currently on council and only three women. So for every man on council, there are two men for every woman. I feel like in this day and age, we should have a better representation of women on council. So that is the foremost reason that I would want to see Holly on council, plus she also is a resident of the center of uh, Lynn Haven, which is important. She doesn't live at the edge. She's never been a beach council member. Lynn Haven is a big district. It goes all the way to Independence. And so it would be great to have her there. She um, also understands the complex budget from her time at Mary Washington and she's a strong supporter of the uh, flood referendum. Um, I want you to really think about putting either one of these men who used to be on council back on council. I'm really not in favor of it because they were both on council for a long time. Mr. Maddox was on council from 2002 to 2006, and Mr. Branch was on council from 1992 to 2002. 
And when I read over the packets very carefully, and I studied them over because you know I'm a fraud examiner, I look at these things very carefully. When I saw Mr. Branch's packet, I was very concerned because he has a lot of priorities about the resort. Are we trying to replace our esteemed Mr. Guy Tower, who is our beach person? No, I don't think so. But if you read that packet carefully, and I've circled some of those things on that part of his application, it talks about the Hotel Association, the CVB restructuring, which is the Convention and Vis Visitors Bureau restructuring, the Convention Center, the event um, contract renewal. And most importantly, I think we have to really look at we are under the microscope right now by a U.S. District uh, Court Judge Jackson. And I would hope that we would want to put somebody in this seat who is representative of the district and looks like a good fit for those of us in the district. So that's my comment. I appreciate your time. I seriously hope you will give Ms. Cuellar your vote. And thank you for all you're doing. Thank you, Rona. Will Sessoms. After Mr. Sessoms is Barbara Messner. Good evening, Will. I tell you, it really looks good on this side. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. And you look very happy. I'm a very lucky man. And you look so was, relaxed. Uh, yeah, so happy. I, I'm blessed. But first of all, thanks to each and every one of you for what you do to serve our city. Uh, we have a great city, and I know it takes a lot of work to make that happen. But uh, it is my honor and privilege to stand before you today to speak about Linwood Branch. As you know, I've been lucky enough to call Virginia Beach my home for my whole life. Many years ago, I crossed paths with Linwood, back when we were teenagers and we were well behaved. And since then, I've had the pleasure of calling my friend. We served on city council together for a number of years as well. So I have the unique perspective of having not only worked with him to serve this great city, but also to have been able to celebrate family milestones along the way. There are three characteristics that I want to uh, be sure to highlight about Linwood. Experience, leadership, and character. Experience, and we just recognized a wonderful vice mayor who uh, resigned, and he had a tremendous amount of that. And Linwood has served our community as well in various capacities over the years, all because he wants us to do is see our city succeed. He's worked on projects ranging in scope, and has his commitment and dedication to seeing the projects through is a true sign of his loyalty and passion to his work. He helped author some of the funding mechanisms in the city budget that are still in place today. At the time, there was no, you know, one project I remember so well, at the time there was no funding for a project called the SeaTac Recreation Center. But recognizing that the project needed, uh, was needed for the neighborhood, he rolled up his sleeves and got to work. By partnering with the community, staff, and council, Linwood helped find and showed the leadership to make it happen. Leadership. Linwood is his own man. He is accustomed to doing thorough research ahead of finalizing his choices and is thoughtful in reviewing all perspectives before making a final decision. He is also the type of person that you would want on your team. He is a team player that leads by example and not, as a, not afraid of hard work because the job has to get done. Lastly, and most importantly, character. If you were to interview anyone that has worked with Linwood over the years, I am confident that they would all speak about his character. Not only is he a great husband and father, but he is just a great person to the core. It's in his DNA. If he says he's going to do something, you can consider it done. No matter if you are his neighbor, a citizen of Virginia Beach, or a member of council, when Linwood says he's in, he is all in. He is a tremendous civic leader whom I admire and respect, and having him serve this great city would be a benefit for the entire community, and I truly hope that you all will select him. Thank, Thank you very much. It's well. nice to see you all. Welcome. I think I will always do. Oh, we'll never run away. I just want to recognize your service since 1992. I think I was. Was 1988. 88. I was on board in 86. You came on board in 88 since then and serving as mayor. But I think it's always important that we recognize people here for their public service. That was Thank very you. gracious, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. You all have a nice evening.
and I'm going home now while you all stay here, Mark. <laughs> Enjoy. The next speaker is Barbara Messner, and after Ms. Messner is Keith Carlson. Welcome back. Fascinating. Too bad we don't get three minutes for each candidate. Okay. Um, Mayor Sessoms, um, I, I can't even say what I want to say. Most people in the know know why, you know, talking about character. When they were partners on the 31st Street, eminent domain abuse, and, and Linwood made 10000 selling timeshares to help um, Ruffin and Thompson. And that's one reason that he resigned in the 90s when the media was actually covering all these things. And then John Uren took his place, you know, chicks of all those places. So basically, he has, Linwood has a major conflict. He's already told you that he'll go along with everything you want. All the candidates did. Why would, why would we put somebody in uh, who's going to, you know, use their money for the Holloway case and is for the bond referendum? Uh, like I said, you created the mess, you keep adding to it, and you want us to pay for it? Okay, Richard Maddox has a 99-year lease. I, I did get the FOIA request after multiple emails, but I didn't get the one for Maddox, but I remember. Richard Maddox has a 99-year lease with the city. You lease his land by the Dairy Queen and you provide entertainment. Um, I think he made 60000 for the resort leadership group uh, in 99, 2000, and they're the ones that created the uh, the insane thing for Fourth of July, the parking restrictions, where you had to have a pass, and people were dropped off, um, you know, in front of the Dairy Queen. That's the only place you could park and ride 110 degrees heat. So, you know, these people are in the resort district, resort oceanfront. They have a conflict. You all have a conflict when they funded you. Um, like I said, the other people, um, you know, but Maddox, you know, all of them agreed with you when they spoke. And it should have been on a Thursday, a separate day. Thank you. The next speaker is Keith Carlson. After Mr. Carlson is Ken Tyler. Good evening. Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, and members of council, good evening. My name is Keith Carlson, and I'm speaking on behalf of Holly Cuellar. I've been a resident of the Lynn Haven District for most of my life, and like Holly, am a graduate of First Colonial High School. In 1983, my dad, my three brothers, and myself opened a screen printing business after moving our original operation out of our King's Grant garage. One of our first customers was the Kingston Elementary School PTA, who ordered t-shirts for a brand new event, the Kingston All-American Run. The president of the PTA was a committed volunteer who had a clear vision for an unproven event. Her name was Heather Tace, and she went on from there to become such a leader in the Lynn Haven community that she was recognized in 1993 as the first citizen of Virginia Beach. Heather is with us today to proudly support her daughter, Holly Cuellar. Holly learned the lessons of hard work, integrity, and community service from her mom's example. From our work together at school events and church ministries, Holly's dedication and professionalism are evident each step of the way. If appointed to city council, I have no doubts about her ability to break down complex issues. I know she is absolutely passionate about education and the important role education plays in secondary <coughs> in securing good jobs and attracting new businesses. From her experience at the University of Mary Washington, she has innovative ideas to forge partnerships with local colleges and businesses to advance workforce development. 
The open seat on council is for the Lynn Haven District 5 seat. Whoever is appointed to that job has big shoes to fill. Over his years of service, Jim Wood was constantly visible in his Lynn Haven district. He spoke at our meetings, he waved in our parades, and he attended our fundraising parties. The Lynn Haven district is an extremely proud district. We treasure our schools and our civic leagues, we cherish our churches and our parks, we root for our sports teams, and we salute our scout troops. Jim Wood understood all that, and Holly Cuellar understands as well. I am proud to share that the residents of the Lynn Haven District, even after almost 40 years, still support my screen print business. They still participate in the Kingston All-American Run, and they still love and appreciate our very own first citizen. Following in the big footprints of those before her, I believe Holly Cuellar is the smart choice for Virginia Beach and the right choice for Lynn Haven District 5. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Ken Tyler. After Mr. Tyler is Julia Inglesby. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ken Tyler, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of Holly Cuellar, candidate for Virginia Beach City Council. I've known Holly for a number of years, and we work closely together in her capacity as member, vice rector, and rector of the Board of Visitors at the University of Mary Washington, where I served as director of athletics and chair of the Department of Health and Physical Education. I observe Holly work tirelessly and effectively on behalf of the university, always keeping the best interest of the students at the forefront just like she will do for the citizens of Virginia Beach and Lynn Haven District as a member of city council. She seamlessly navigated potentially challenging situations by fostering a climate based on empathy, inclusion, and collaboration. As a leader, Holly is able to inspire a group to share a common vision and goal while making sure they still feel individually heard and empowered. As rector, she created a positive environment that enabled the members, all of whom were accomplished individuals coming from diverse backgrounds and perspectives, to work together effectively for the common good. Holly was appointed to the UMW board by two different governors from different political parties, which speaks volumes about her reputation and her ability to bring people together and simply get things done. Holly has deep roots in Virginia Beach and has a vested interest in seeing her hometown thrive and prosper. Holly is part of a Navy family and clearly understands the issues facing the city. She will bring an in-depth appreciation for the city's storied history, an understanding of its current challenges and opportunities, and a strategic vision for an exciting future in Virginia Beach. Holly operates with the highest degree of integrity and her character is above reproach. <coughs> her outgoing and friendly personality is combined with a fierce determination to succeed and excel. I am a former NCAA Division I basketball player, longtime basketball coach, and director of athletics. <coughs> and I know what a great teammate, leader, and winner looks like. Holly Cuellar is that person and she is the right person to fill the vacant Lynn Haven District seat on the Virginia Beach City Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Julia Inglesby and then Sheila Griffin. Welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, and members of City Council. My name is Julie Inglesby, and it is an honor to speak tonight in support of Holly Cuellar for the Lynn Haven District vacancy. I'm a little hoarse because I'm a first grade teacher, and I talk to them all day. <laughs> um, I'm a lifelong resident of Virginia Beach, and I've known Mrs. Cuellar since kindergarten, when our two Navy families were both stationed in Coronado at the same time, and I became fast friends with her daughter, Isabella. When we met again several years later, this time in Virginia Beach, Mrs. Cuellar's warmth and welcoming kindness were just as I had remembered. Growing up in the Little Neck area, she was a fixture in our community, volunteering with the PTA, with our local swim team, 
and as an advocate for the Military Interstate Compact to ensure education opportunities for military children. She has always been, and continues to be, an incredibly strong female role model with an amazing work ethic. She also happens to bake a blue ribbon winning carrot cake. As a young person who grew up here in Virginia Beach and who recently bought my first home on Shore Drive, Mrs. Quare is exactly the kind of community member I hope to have as a steward of my city, as I believe in her commitments to listening and acting in the best interests of the city and its residents. As a first grade teacher in our Virginia Beach City Public Schools dual immersion program, I also appreciate Mrs. Quare's values of diversity and inclusion and multilingualism as her husband's, husband Al's family is from Bolivia and he speaks both English and Spanish at home. Virginia Beach has been my home since I myself was in first grade and I plan to make it my home for many years to come. I hope to see people such as Mrs. Quayer in positions of leadership and responsibility both now and in the future. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Sheila Griffin, after Ms. Griffin is Karen Forcher. Hello, good evening. Um, to Mayor Dyer and Vice Mayor and the members of the City Council, my name is Sheila Griffin and I am here to express my support for Holly Cuellar. I'm one of the candidates to fill a vacant seat for the Lynn Haven District. My husband and I have lived in the Lynn Haven District for the past 25 years and I met Holly 15 years ago when I was president of the Kingston Elementary PTA and Holly volunteered and shared our largest fundraiser. Holly and I have served alongside one another in many capacities throughout the years as our children attended Kingston Elementary and Lynn Haven Middle School. Holly has been a friend and a neighbor, and I can attest to her trustworthiness, her honesty, her integrity, her professionalism, and her leadership. Holly grew up in Virginia Beach, and being a military wife, no matter where the military took them, her heart was always in Virginia Beach. And upon her husband's retirement from the military, they returned home home to Virginia Beach. Holly recently shared a memory that we had when we had our children at Kingston. She said she will never forget a meeting when I said that no one should wag their tongue in the parking lot if they weren't willing to step up to the table. And when Lynn Haven Council seat became vacant, she wanted to do just that, to step up to the table. Holly's desire is quite simple. She wants to serve and contribute to the initiatives to enhance our entire community. That simple but very important desire is why Holly Cuellar should be the choice, clear choice to fill this vacancy. One of Holly's greatest attributes is that she listens and she learns. I believe Holly would explore and address any and all issues which may arise with an open mind and take into consideration all that she has learned to suggest, implement, and support projects for sustainability for our city. Holly would be a valuable addition to the city's governing body. I can personally attest to how well Holly works with her peers and what a positive, hard worker and dedicated, dedicated individual she is. There is no doubt in my mind or in the mind of anyone who knows Holly that she would be dedicated, steadfast, and um, in helping to implement the decisions made by the City Council and would be instrumental in building and growing an inclusive and diverse community. I can see her working with farmers, entrepreneurs, those in the tourism and travel industry, our school leaders and teachers, those in the military, and people from all ethnical and economic communities to bring nonpartisan thoughts and ideas to the council. I would kindly ask that you consider Holly Cuellar as the best candidate to fill this vacancy, as she truly would be an asset to your council and to our city. Holly will lead with empathy and compassion, ask questions, listen, and impact the decisions the council has on all the communities within our city. And most importantly, she will listen, learn, and be kind and compassionate to this city, this, to the residents of this city, the people that this council serves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Karen Porter, and then Debbie Hines. Welcome and good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, M Madam Vice Mayor, and members of council. My name is Karen Fortier, Sorry. and I've known Holly Cuellar in family, professional, and civic settings for over 10 years. I'm trying to keep it to three minutes, so I'm just going to read straight on through. That time and experience have resulted in my having deep respect for Holly and her husband, Al, as well as their extended families, whom I also know very well. Let me tell you why I have such respect, and I'm going to do it in a bullet point style. 
first of all, character, the overriding issue. She is a humble servant and a humble leader, which is a rare combination. She does not try to direct attention to herself. She's more interested in directing attention to finding solutions and problem to, to problems and finding new and better ways of doing things. She's like the young girl who let the air out of the tires of the truck that was stuck in the tunnel. She knew to let the air out while everybody else was talking about cutting off the top of the truck. That's Holly. Integrity, she's beholden to no one except the people she serves, whether it's family, her church, this city, this council, and anyone else. She's hardworking. Everyone here works hard. Holly also works smart. She's very efficient because she can separate the wheat from the chaff. She will take what's important and use that and set aside that which is not important to the decision at hand. She has an ability to work with diverse groups. I have seen her in situations with very difficult people. I'm an attorney and I won't get into that, but uh, <laughs> she, suffice it to say she is able to tamp down emotions and help people focus on the mission at hand. As the previous sp speaker told you, she's a consensus builder, and she really showed that in high style when she was the rector at the University of Mary Washington, having served two governors in, two, in both political parties. And last, her compassion. Her personal experiences with a dear brother who died way too young from a degenerative disease, her care for elderly family members, and others who have demonstrated her compassion and determination to support the most vulnerable in our community. Holly Cuellar wants to be where she can do the most good, and she has determined that City Council is that place. And as you can tell, many of us heartily agree with that decision. Thank you so much for your time and your service. Thank you for your time. Thank yes, you. Sir. Debbie Hines, and after Ms. Hines will be Loris Guerin. Welcome to both of you. How you doing? How you just doing? Fine. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Debbie Hines. This is my grandbaby, Vikaya. We live in Landis Apartment. Linwood Ranch spoke about us last week. We'd like to thank you for not for stopping the gunfire in Atlantis. We do not have to lay on the floor anymore because there's no more gun shooting. Atlanta is now a safe place to live. I know Linwood for 10 years. He has helped me and my family many times. When I didn't have a place to stay, he put me up for the whole winter. He have brought me clothes. His wife have brought me uh, food from the bank of the church when I needed it. Linwood helped people when they are down. He is a good man and would be able to help people even more if he gets on city council and thank you. I love Mr. Lambert. <laughs> 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 thank you. Oh. Loris Garen and then Tara Corrigal. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. My name is Laura Scarron, and I would like to thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of someone that I have always been proud to call my friend, Holly Cuellar. My husband and I own a chiropractic clinic in Virginia Beach called New Life Chiropractic and are residents of the Lynn Haven District. We both support her and would like to encourage you to appoint her to the open seat on City Council. I listened to all of the candidates and their qualifications and admittedly they are all qualified to serve. However, we can read about all of the other candidates and their past votes and know what to expect of each of them, which makes me feel like we would be going backwards. If you appoint Holly to this position, she will help take you forward. I've known Holly for 16 years. I have stood behind her during that time as she parented a daughter, volunteered endlessly in schools and churches, advocated for the election of a governor, sat on a board of visitors under a Republican and a Democratic governor, supported a military spouse, and cared for a parent while she recovered from a serious hospitalization. 
She did all of these things with strength and compassion. She is smart, fair, open-minded, and hardworking. She would be someone that you could talk to and who would listen, someone that you could count on, and someone you could work with. According to the Reflective Democracy Campaign, women make up 51% of Virginia's population, but only 30% serve as elected officials. There are currently only three women on this city council, and that is much less than the 30% of this 11-member council. Jen Sinzak, the Associate Director of the Center for American Women and Politics at Rutgers University, stated in a recent article that women legislatures make government more transparent and accessible, especially to marginalized groups. They're also proven more likely to build consensus and work across the aisle. I think we can all agree that government, whether it be city council or the federal government, works much better and better represents its citizens when it reflects the diversity of their constituents. You have an opportunity to fill this seat with a woman and a human who would work hard, help you work as one, and move the council and its agenda forward. I hope that you do not let this opportunity pass you by. Thank you very much Thank for your time. Thank you very time. much. Tara Corrigal, and then Yusuf Tejada. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, City Council members and appointees. My name is Tara Corrigal and I've been a North End Virginia Beach resident for 13 years. I'm here tonight to speak in support of Lynn Haven District City Council candidate Holly Cuellar. She is ready, able and prepared. Holly is a consensus builder. She and I served together for four years on the Board of Visitors of our alma mater, the University of Mary Washington. As you know, these are gubernatorial appointments, and by Mary Washington Charter, six of the 12 visitors are alumni. Even with the change of party, her leadership and dedicated was further recognized when she was reappointed for a second term. During our tenure, Holly was voted by her peer visitors into leadership roles of vice rector and rector. As a Virginia public four-year university, our constituents included students, faculty, staff, cabinet, parents, the General Assembly, and the Fredericksburg community. The issues that came before the board were varied, complicated, time sensitive, and often controversial. I'm sure that resonates with all of you. Holly thoughtfully, respectfully, and patiently led us through many discussions and built real consensus around the shared outcome. Even when we didn't quite agree, we always felt heard and supported and respectful of the way forward. We were reunited in the outcome and spoke as one voice. I would also describe Holly as a strategic thinker and planner. During our time on the board, we hired our 10th president. Recruiting a college president is a high stakes, complicated and time consuming endeavor. Distrust and concern about that process to hire number 10 was a big deal. Our ninth president, Rick Hurley, was an effective leader and with his wife, Rose, were a tough act to follow. Holly's ability to respect the past, listen to the present, but with an eye towards the future was critical to the success of this project. As she was building out the Presidential Search Advisory Committee, she shared her thoughts on timeline and time commitment. She kept us on track and focused, which doesn't happen often enough in committee assignments. She chose members that were empowered and respected within their constituencies, and with respect for the process and trust in each other, we hired a sitting college president and confidently introduced him to the community. Holly's leadership style and structure were critical to our success. Holly is dedicated to Virginia Beach. She lives in a house around the corner from her family home. Her mother lives there, and even when Holly and her family lived outside the area, they kept their Virginia Beach home, knowing that they wanted to come back to this community. Holly is a daughter of a retired Marine and the spouse of a retired Navy captain, gives her instant credibility in that community. I know you have a big decision ahead of you, and I thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts this evening. I ask that you give Holly Quare your strongest consideration. She will serve Virginia Beach well. Consensus building is critical to your continued success. Holly has demonstrated a true expertise in this often elusive quality. Good night. Hey, Thank thanks you. a bunch. Appreciate it. Next speaker is Yusuf Tejada and then Robert Aldani. Yusuf, good, good evening. Good evening, Council Members, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mary Wilson. I'm here today to express my support for Ms. Holly Quare, who I believe will be a valuable addition to our city's governing body. 
My name is Yusef Tejada, and I've had the absolute pleasure of living in the city of Virginia Beach for my whole life. I've had the opportunity to serve my community at various capacities throughout the years. I firmly believe that in order to effectively engage in public discourse, there needs to be an understanding of the pertinent issues in the community and the willingness to listen. I believe that Ms. Cuellar, in addition to being a professional in her own, sorry, I apologize. I believe that Ms. Cuellar, in addition to being a professional in her own right, exhibits these characteristics and many more that I know will aid her should she be appointed. Ms. Cuellar shares a similar passion of mine, which is to serve. Ms. Cuellar, in addition to being a professional, has contributed her time in various nonprofits. She was part of a team from Comfort Crew for Military Kids that helped raise $20,000 and distribute more than 200 deployment kits to military children in Virginia Beach and Norfolk. Comfort Crew for Military Kids is a nonprofit that is focused on the needs of military children in the Hampton Roads area. Ms. Cuellar has lived in the Lynn Haven District since 2004 and her spouse, a retired Navy captain. I believe that Ms. Cuellar would be a valuable addition to our city's council and would bring a high degree of professionalism with her. I would like to thank the council, mayor and vice mayor for the time this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks so much, Yusuf. Thank you, guys. Next speaker is Robert O'Donnell, and then Martha Thoreau. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, and members of City Council. My name is Bob Aldani. I'm a retired Navy captain and currently serve as a government civilian with the Navy. My family and I have made Virginia Beach our home for most of the past 40 years. I humbly and proudly rise in, in the strongest personal support of Holly Cuellar and her effort to join you on the City Council. I've had the pleasure of knowing Holly for 13 years. We were first introduced when I was the Chief of Staff at Naval Surface Force Atlantic, where I served with her husband, then Commander Al Cuellar. Holly was actively involved in our command and immediately impressed me with her energy, commitment, and public service. I have observed her as a humble servant leader, active listener, and effective coordinator. She is truly passionate about the issues of our community and the citizens that she will serve. Before, during, and after that tour, Holly lived the military family experience, including multiple moves, coping with the spouse being away, and the anxiety that comes with military service, serving as a single parent to her daughter, and bonding with other spouses. She emerged even stronger and will bring a valuable, diverse, and military family perspective in support of the many Virginia Beach families the Council serves. Since then, I have observed Holly lovingly supporting her aging mother, Heather Tace, with whom I was honored to serve on the Board of Management of the Armed Services YMCA of Hampton Roads, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping military families. Meeting Heather, I came to understand better how Holly's propensity for service evolved from her mother and her deceased father, Colonel Tace. I was pleased to see Holly supporting her mother and many of our Armed Service YMCA events. This continued Holly's pattern of providing support and leadership. Like her mother, Heather, Holly, Holly is a model citizen and devoted military spouse with the highest integrity and character. She has been an exceptional public servant and will bring a unique and valuable perspective to the council as a daughter, wife, and mother in a military family. With her experience, passion, and commitment, I know she will serve well and improve our community as a member of this council. In closing, Holly Quayer is energetic, smart, strong-willed, hardworking, and an exceptional role model to others. <clears throat> she is morally courageous, possessing strong values and unquestionable integrity derived from her faith, her, up being, her upbringing, and being part of our Navy family. She is strongly committed to this community and serving others and has the time to commit to the seat so ably held by Mr. Wood. Holly Cuellar has earned my personal recommendation for this position. I most strongly urge you to make Holly Cuellar your appointee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Martha Thoreau and then Rashid Bacheney. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening, everyone. I'm here tonight in opposition to your flawed method of anointing or appointing a city council member to fill the unwarranted vacancy of Jim Wood. His decision to leave at this time seems rather strategic in my opinion, 
and the fact that you are deliberately leaving the citizens out of the process is disturbing, though not surprising. Those of us who have been following beach politics truly believe the selection has already been made, and simple math convinces me that the die is cast. But who is the man men behind the curtain pulling the strings? Again, there is little doubt amongst the informed, not so with the general public. Most do not know beach politics, nor the power of special interest here. Sometimes your actions are so egregious that people come before you in mass, beseeching you on matters of great import, yet you placate them and dismiss hundreds of letters, emails, and phone calls they send, and roll over to the wishes of those who would feather their own nest along with yours. In this, the latest appointment gate, we are informed that 14 people had made application to fill Mr. Wood's seat. From those 14, you choose six to interview, and from those six, you have whittled it down to the four tonight. You published the resumes of the six selected, but denied the public the right to review the eight who were not. Why? And while city council positions are supposed to be nonpartisan, let's suspend fantasy for now. The seat was held by a staunch Republican, and it will remain in that camp. In my opinion, Wood's abdication was just part of a plan to avoid loss of control should he fail to be reelected next year. Surely the plan has the input and blessing of the royal court and their king. Y'all will continue to make your, blessed, your biased appointments to important committees, commissions, and boards, and these folks will obey and perform accordingly. But let the rest of us eat sand. Hail Caesar. I learned the other day about one of the failed applicants. Don't know his political party, but I do know that he has not received a red cent from any developers, beach businesses, nor attorneys that routinely show up here. He has spent 20 years advocating for the communities within the Lynn Haven District and all along Shore Drive Corridor as a leader in the Shore Drive Community Coalition. Why was this man, Todd Solomon, denied an interview? Why, in fact, were not all candidates given an interview in this public arena? John Moss asked the chosen ones about their positions on the upcoming contentious Marlin Bay Apartments proposal, which could have a dire impact on Pleasure House Point. Many of you have received money from this developer who has close connections with the Wood family, as well as some of the candidates. You know how the citizens feel about this. Are you prepared to abstain on voting on this matter? Or will it be business as usual? We are watching you closely. Thank, Thank you. you. Varshid uh, Vicheni and then Lisa Turner. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of the City Council. My name is Varshid Vachani. I have lived in this area for 25 years. I have an operating business on the Virginia Beach for 25 years. I'm here to speak on behalf of Linwood Branch. I have, I have had the honor and privilege of working with Linwood Branch on various occasions and on a couple of boards. Linwood will bring his years of experience, vast knowledge, and love for the city of Virginia Beach to the council. Being a hands-on business owner and dealing with day-to-day -day <laughs> challenges, he knows how to compromise, work together for a common goal, and be part of the solution. He has a proven track record of getting things done to benefit the businesses and citizens in the entire city of Virginia Beach. Helping to spearhead the creation of the Sandler Center for Performing Arts and creating the TIF fund that's supporting a lot of budget for the city right now are such great examples. His gifts and talents will be a welcome addition as we explore many initiatives that will catapult the area forward in coming years. He is knowledgeable and supports the offshore wind energy program with close to 180 wind turbines off the coast by 2026, in addition to many other positive economic initiatives underway. He understands the needs and priorities of the city of Virginia Beach, believes in listening to the people being affected, educating them about the issues, and coming with the solutions from ground up. Linwood is a public servant and has a citywide vision. Many more in Virginia Beach are aware of the flooding referendum because of his efforts in educating them about the problems the city is facing and continues to face unless something is done about it. He's working hard to make sure everyone else throughout the city is educated and knowledgeable of all the, all the important issues the city is facing and the solutions that are possible. Linwood is well experienced, has a community-minded, common-sense approach to issues facing the area. He is a consensus builder 
and is highly respected in the community with a deep knowledge of the city of Virginia Beach and the tourism industry, which brings a lot of fundings to the city and along with the community he represents. I believe he will make a great addition to the city council, and I hope as a team you guys consider that. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Lisa Turner. After Ms. Turner is Jamal Gunn. Welcome. <clears throat> Hello, and thank you, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wood, and members of City Council. My name is Lisa Turner, and I have lived in the Bayside District for the last 15 years. And I'm pleased to be here tonight in support of Carla Hessel Tyne, who is up for the Lynn Haven District City Council seat. Last week, I submitted a letter to you all um, recommending Carla for this position not only based on my experience of volunteering with Carla, but also as a close friend and colleague. Over the past several years, I've witnessed Carla, her tireless efforts to lift up communities in need, including but not li limited to the food insecure, those that are suffering from mental health issues, the elderly, and those individuals facing inequities in the LGBTQ community. Her life experiences and background in volunteerism and standing up for these values will bring a fresh perspective to governing on city council. Carla's commitment to unity and consensus building is one of her best qualities. We have disagreed plenty over the years, but her dedication to being true to her word has been invaluable to me as a colleague and as a friend. She will bring those same assets to her service on city council. She has a crystal clear understanding of what it means to listen to all sides, put in the time, do the homework, and this ultimately leads to an ability to find common ground on complicated issues, which she excels at. Carla is a recent graduate of the Sorensen Institute of Political Leadership. And since completing the program, I have seen a shift in how she has rededicated herself to public service. As a former graduate myself, and I know some of you are alumni too. It is a rigorous program with very high ideals for civic participation. The Sorensen program teaches that serving in government is a balance of maintaining civility and attaining compromise in order to build bold public policy for the community it serves. In today's unsettling political environment, I believe choosing Carla for this vacancy will go a long way in instilling confidence in Virgi with Virginia Beach residents. An elected body that strives to work towards diverse representation when given the task to choose its own members carries a heavy responsibility. Representation matters, and now more than ever. I hope you will consider selecting Carla, as I believe her appointment will demonstrate goodwill, trust, and provide the city with a great ambassador for the key issues we face. Thank you for your time and consideration of Carla Thank for you your selection. Much. Thank you. It. Jamal Gunn. After Mr. Gunn is Rabbi Zoberman. Good evening. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, my name is Jamal Gunn. I am here to speak on behalf of um, my, my friend, candidate, fellow Sorensen grad, and co-human rights commissioner, Carla, Carla Hesseltine. Car um, now, I know you heard a lot of speakers before you um, tonight, and um, you still have a lot to consider um, before you, your night is through. So I um, hope you don't mind. It'd be like Henry VIII with his wife. I won't keep you long. I just want to make a couple of comments and be on my way. Um, but um, I've, written, I've written a letter in support of Carla, and I hope you was well received. But I do want to make, a, make sure to add an, an addendum that I know that on this council, what you're looking for is someone to be a complement to the council and to maintain the cohesion that I um, and maintain cohesion on your board. I know you aren't. I know you aren't simply looking for someone. Um, you aren't simply looking for someone who's just going to be here to work, but I do know Carla is going to be, be able to put in the work that you need to make the city run. 
Um, Carla, she, um, I'm sorry, but um, Carla, she stepped up in every way possible on our Human Rights Commission. Um, and she's been counted on for being a, an ardent voice in support of not just issues of human rights, but with her background as a businesswoman, you have to appreciate how hard it, that is and the de dedication it takes to be a success. I am more than certain Carla will take the issues and matters brought to the city and will give them the respect and diligence we demand. As we have had a, on the Human Rights Commission, you have no greater asset on the council than with Carla Hesseltine. Lastly, while I do recognize that you have a, large, a number of strong candidates and experienced candidates before you, I do ask very graciously that we consider new voices on the council. While other candidates have worked with many of you in the past and could well work well with you again, we have to recognize the importance of what a diverse voice will bring. In a city where half the city is female, we currently have a city council with just three women. If we want to make sure our city reflects the diversity we want to encourage, we have to start with our council. We have to start with Carla Hesseltine. Please give it a proper consideration. I know you won't regret it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Rabbi Zoberman. And after Rabbi Zoberman is Sean Montero. Good evening, Rabbi. Good to see you. See you at the 58 Daily soon. Uh, oh, you better believe it. OK. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mr. Jones remembers when I used to have hair when I first came here almost 40 years ago. <laughs> but being a pulpit rabbi for almost 50 years, you lose it eventually. Ministry is challenging. But I have to admire what you do. I couldn't have done it. Your patience, your forbearance, your attendance, attentiveness to everyone who comes before you. I couldn't have done it, though I've attended million temple board meetings. That can be also very challenging. <laughs> and I know Mr. Berlucci from the Human Rights Commission and the predecessor who spoke right here. I know him. I look around. I know and admire you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. As I said, I've been in ministry for almost 50 years. I have a doctorate from a Presbyterian seminary in McCormick in Chicago. I'm the only rabbi to get it in pastoral counseling back in 1980. I was with presidents in the White House who listened to me. I listened to them. I make my views known in the community. This is the first time that I stand before a body of elected officials and appointed ones to speak on behalf of someone that is truly a moving personality. I say so with many years of experience. We have heard from somebody who spoke here earlier, whom I appreciate very much, about experience, leadership, and character. I would begin with character. But more than that, you heard about how Carla is so sensitive about the vulnerable in our community. She's the kind of person, when you meet her, you're instantly attracted to her inner world, to her inner vision. I would not have come before you if I had any doubts that the daughter of a coal miner who became a police chief has the qualities and the opportunity, if you would allow her to blossom here with you, to be not only a partner with you, but she will also stand her ground when necessary. She will do it with a smile, with a soft walk, and yet her presence will be deeply felt. So again, thank you, and uh, I'll see you soon. Shalom. Thank you. God bless. Right. Appreciate it. Sean Montero. After Mr. Montero is Jafari Jones. Hello and good evening. Hey, good evening, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, and uh, Council Members. And uh, I am, uh, my name is Sean Montero. This is my little boy, Landon, and uh, <laughs> and we live in the uh, and we live in the Centerville District. I'm here to lend my voice as you make the tough decision on picking uh, one of the four finalists for the recently vacated Lynn Haven seat. I'm excited that my friend Carla Hessel Hesseltine made this list and would like to offer a few points to consider as you make your decision. While you have a solid list of talented finalists, I am confident that Carla is among the best to fill this seat. She is competent, credible, and an engaged leader, ready to hit the ground running. City Council is probably by far the most impactful level of government that a U.S. resident will encounter. Every day, you put governance into action through vital government services and programs. We are not in a position to wait for a council member to get up to speed, nor have someone 
too entrenched to move us for, to not move us forward. With her talents and diverse perspective, Carla will immediately make positive impact to our city. As a 30-year resident, she has, been, she has seen Virginia Beach flourish in the city that it is today. As a small business owner, as well as a state board and city commission, commission member, Carla provides a unique understanding of the relevant issues that face the city. I am confident that while she will represent Lynn Haven District with passion, Carla will take into account all districts and demographics in this city, from the oceanfront to I-64, from the bay to the border. Carla will provide a voice to all residents, working families and military families, and business owners that make up this community. <laughs> through, involvement, through her involvement as a human rights commissioner and activist for elder care, Carla brings instant credibility. She understands how city processes work and how to get things done. Her work on advocacy for mental health crisis identification in law enforcement encounters alone shows that she does not see public safety as a zero-sum game. Carla's ability to work by di with diverse points of view is evident with legislation that she helped to pass across political spectrums regarding elderly rights and translates into her fight for food security amongst impacted communities. Carla is no stranger to engaging the community and her colleagues to solve problems. As she brings voice to the voiceless of, or seldom heard, she is acutely aware of the necessary work that this body must do to truly be a leading city in this commonwealth. As we get ready, uh, as we get ready to recover from this pandemic, ensuring that our small business owners have resources to stay in business and pay workers a fair wage, or dealing with dire the direct effects of climate change that we see with the extensive Thank and debilitating flooding in our Most city. Most appreciated. Thanks a lot. And thanks for your contribution to our city. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Um, for Landon. <laughs> Jafari Jones, and after Mr. Jones is Jake Jacobs. Good evening. What's going on? It's been a while since uh, I've seen uh, you guys up here. Can't say it's been a pleasure. Um, so speaking on the subject matter at hand, I'm electing somebody to fill one of these. I'm assuming this seat, since this seat is not filled. I don't see Duhaney here either, which isn't a surprise because he hasn't clocked in since he's been here. Um, but just here, to, we do have a, a candidate in mind, but um, being that we know y'all stifle for us, we will leave him or her unnamed today for the sake of their own campaign because, you know, once y'all know that, y'all would uh, pounce on, you know, whomever. Um, but we are requesting that whoever does fill this seat um, not ignore the families of, of the different injustices that have gone on here that none of us are strangers to. Um, Y'all seen us plenty of times. Y'all pretty much shut us out, ignore. Uh, we've done the sit down meetings, we've done the phone calls, and now we're just flat out ignored, I guess because we're not the NAACP. The only council member up here right now that has literally reached out to family is Sabrina Wooten, like literally the only one. Aaron Rouse blocked us on social media. He was an NFL safety, but he just said, I, <laughs> I'm a bully in the hallway because we tweet him. So I guess he's strong enough to be the safety of an NFL team and the Virginia Tech Hokies that he tells us so much about, but he can't help these families in six months. You know, different during slavery, you had your house slaves and you had your field slaves. And Aaron Rouse would have definitely been in the house. They have a reference, rhymes with raccoon. He goes with that as well. So the next one up here, please don't neglect citizens because we're not going anywhere. You know, we're growing. We'll be here to pester whomever, you know, so just doing right by the people is not really that hard. And then y'all have the special sessions. And the only time we can speak to y'all is once every two months as you sit on your throne of lies and then you elect who you want. Just like this lady said, she, she hit the nail on the head, y'all. Special did, but it, he's probably also ducking indictments because the cover-up of Donovan Lynch, the cover-up of DeShayla Harris, Pharrell's pulling money out of the city, y'all gonna continue to ignore it until you're indicted. And then you're facing penalties for cover-ups and racketeering and all these special interests, and y'all go to jail like we're seeing people all around the world. So 
I can't wait to hear them cuffs cling. And as much as y'all hate me, just some trust and believe, the feeling's probably mutual. Don't push tourism without worrying about the citizens. Don't block social justice groups for requesting answers. And do your damn job. That's pretty much all it comes down to. And Aaron, you're, you're a safety. You're the strongest person up here, and you feel like I bullied you? Me and all 150 pounds? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's for real. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't let Mr. Jones have a seat um, before I, I respond. Um, tonight, what, what you have just witnessed is just, number one, it's disrespectful, not only to the hard work um, that I have uh, continuously served my community, um, and I've been an upstanding community, uh, member of my community for quite some time. I find it disrespectful to these members of this council. Um, and I find it, um, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. You, you, you have to sit down, Mr. Jones. No, you're out of order. Please sit down. Mr. Jones, you are out of order. What you have here, um, you know, I was taught that you don't meet hate with hate, you meet hate with love. And um, the disrespect, I, I, I'm used to that, I've taken that. Um, it's something that comes with the territory, we, we've all no strangers to that. Um, but to say of one's character and integrity is beyond the pale. And for those who would seem to follow someone who is just reckless, who is disrespectful, who uses bully tactics to try to get his point across, it would be like the blind leading the blind. And I would be careful from getting behind someone like that. To set the record straight, and I'm sorry we have to do this when trying to figure out the, the best candidate to fill the Excuse Lincoln me, Mr. State. Jones, could you put the flag down? We respect the flag, but you're sitting around people. To set the record straight, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, we, we experience a mass shooting here. We experienced a weekend where there was multiple shootings where two victims lost their lives and multiple people were injured, multiple injured. The aforementioned Mr. Donovan Lynch, which I attended the funeral of, Mr. Shayla Harris, I attended the funeral of as well. And myself, along with two of my colleagues, called the special session and brought down the attorney general to hear the concerns of the family and to figure out how do we bring more transparency to that violent weekend. To fabricate lies and to use their name in such a disrespectful, disrespectful way shows a lot about the character of that individual. So Mr. Jones, yes, I have blocked you from my social media account, which I know that irks you so badly, because it's okay to have a difference of opinion, viewpoints, and perspectives, but it's not okay to be disrespectful to get that point across. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I thank you, and uh, you know, Mr. Ress, I thank you for the point, and one of the reasons Aaron and you know everybody else I had included within the speaker's policy is to strive for civility and we as the council tried to exemplify that and you know we have First Amendment issues and stuff we have to let people speak but I'll tell you what that doesn't build bridges it burns down bridges and if we're gonna get together as a society and come together and we, we endeavor to do that as a council. We endeavor to do that as a community. It starts with civility and realizing what we have in common, not what divides us. And as we move forward, and we are going to move forward to build this community, Virginia Beach is a very unique place. We, we are a community of many faiths that are the glue that really holds us together. And we are grateful to live in such a great city. We are a safe city. Are we a perfect city? No one, no city is perfect. But I'm telling you, you have a council here that strives to work in the same direction. 
you know, we have a very diverse council, and we will move forward, you know, with, with, with what we have to do. Thank you. Okay, can we continue now? The next speaker is Jake Jacobs, and after Mr. Jacobs is Rhonda Young. <clears throat> How you doing, Jake? Good evening, Mayor. Ben of Vice Mayor, member of the Council. My name is Jake Jaycox, and I'm here tonight to encourage you to appoint Linwood Branch to the Lynn Haven District seat on the City Council. I first met Linwood in the mid-1980s when I was a police supervisor working in the resort area. We have been friends since then. My co-workers and I quickly recognized him as being approachable, sincere, and true to his word, a big picture kind of guy, and an advocate for the city. <clears throat> At the time, we had no idea just how accurate our assessment of him was. You know that he served as a member of council for 10 years, followed by eight years on the development authority. Incredibly valuable experience. As you would expect of the Beach District representative, during his tenure on council, he supported things such as the creation of the Tourism Growth Investment Fund, the Resort Events Program, the Boardwalk and Seawall Project, <clears throat> SeaTac Recreation Center, parking garages, and the list goes on and on. His focus, however, was on the whole city. Among the things he advocated for, for were the ARP, Sandbridge Beach Replenishment, the Lighthouse Homeless Facility, the ATC, Town Center, and the Amphitheater. Those are all examples of helping to move the city forward, not backward. Indicative of his many accomplishments while previously on council, and his impact with the litany of community groups that he has been actively involved in, Linwood works well with others and enjoys doing so. Positive results come from his collaborative approach. He listens to all sides and strives for the right outcome that benefits the largest number of stakeholders. A strong work ethic, collaboration, doing what's right, and leadership are his hallmarks. Without those qualities, he would not have been previously selected to serve as chairman of the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce or as president of the Resort Retailers Association, the Virginia Beach Police Foundation, the Virginia Beach Hotel Motel Association, and the Sandler Center Foundation, where he was instrumental in raising over $14 million for the center. Linwood tells everyone that Virginia Beach has been good to him. Ever the community servant and actively involved in disparate <laughs> civic groups for over 30 years, I submit that Linwood has been good for Virginia Beach. Appointing him to the Lynn Haven District seat will position him to do even more good as he works together with you, Manager Duhaney, and the city staff to make our great city even better. Please appoint Linwood Branch to the Lynn Haven District seat. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Rhonda Young. After Ms. Young is Jennifer Lester. Thank you very much. My name is Rhonda Young. Oh, I'm, How y'all doing? I apologize, ma'am. Hi, everybody. Um, this is my first time getting the opportunity to meet you guys. I've been living in the beautiful city of Virginia Beach for one year, one month, 15 days, and 25 seconds. Yes. And I'm Rhoda Young Live, and I'm the number one news reporter at Hampton Roads. And I come here to snitch on Wavy News 10, Channel 3, and also Channel 13 News. And I want y'all to know and understand that I'm a resident, and they mistreat your citizen. Channel 10, Channel 3, and also Wave News 10 refuse to put me on news and to acknowledge the good work that I do for y'all city, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Newport News, and so on. They prefer to put somebody on news that's going to pass out some Lego blocks, and I find people missing kids, some alive and some dead. I also bust down all the slumlords because y'all don't have time for that. So I go in there and dig out the stories that need to be heard and bring it to the board attention. Mainly, I work with slumlords in Portsmouth, Virginia, because they got the worst city. They call the ugly stepchild of the seven, five, other seven cities. Okay, Virginia Beach, y'all are the queen and the king. Okay, this is the number one city. However, if there is a slumlord issue in your city and y'all can't get out to it, y'all citizens call me. But Wavy News 10, China 3, and also China 13 News, shun me from the news because they don't want y'all to know that I exist. But I do exist, and I'm here for the community and the people. Keep up the good work. I'm running your life. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jennifer, <clears throat> Jennifer Lester. <laughs> After Miss Lester will be Jay Boone. Yeah. 
Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for letting me speak, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Vice Mayor, and City Council. I'm really honored to be here. Um, I just had to speak really a second. I am not normally the most negative person, but I am going to speak in my strong opposition to Carla Hesseltine as a possible City Council member. I had experiences with Ms. Hesseltine when she was the chair of the Virginia Beach Democrats. During her chairship, there were so many controversies and scandals that I, I could not go through them. But to go through just a few situations that she was a part of, she repeatedly bullied members of the committee on social media and then accused them of being cyber bullies when they responded to her. She blocked almost everyone who had anything bad to say about her at various points. She blocked me. She called me a hashtag loser on Twitter, but that was one of her milder criticisms. One member who was opposed to her, she tried to get fired from her job by tagging her employer on Twitter on numerous occasions. And there are screenshots of all of this that's publicly available. I have never, in six years working in politics, encountered anyone who was as divisive and dishonest as Ms. Hesseltine. Um, her behavior towards the lifelong Democrats who had volunteered and had given decades of their lives to the party was extremely disrespectful. Um, she, there were about a dozen attempts to remove her from the party and she finally resigned in 2019. Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely unbiased because I was the campaign manager for Mike Mescal. He ran for the Lynn Haven seat in 2018. He was a Democrat and he was the treasurer of the Democratic Party uh, un directly under Ms. Hesseltine. Ms. Hesseltine, it turned out, was a very close friend of Jim Wood of many decades. So even though Jim Wood was a Republican and there was a Democrat running for the seat, she did not want the Democrat recommended. And she fought tooth and nail against him being on the ballot guide from day one. This, I think, is a little bit of a conflict and a little bit of an issue when you have this woman now trying to get the seat that she prevented somebody else from taking in 2018. And I think that her behavior was extremely unethical because she was not capable at any point in being fair and in having honest conversations with people who were critical of her. Um, to give an example, the very first time I just raised my hand and asked a question in a Democratic meeting, as I'm walking out, she confronts me, she gets aggressive towards me, and when I pointed out that, you know, there is an issue with you pushing away young people from the party, she said, good, okay, bye, and she put her hand in my face. I've never encountered anything like that in politics. I've never encountered anyone like her in politics. And I just think it would be extremely unwise because I've never once seen her engage in a respectful conversation with someone who disagreed with her. And that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Jay, <clears throat> Jay Boone, after Ms. Boone is Tim Solnick. Solanic, maybe. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Carla's application stood out to me the most from all the other ones. I felt there was an actual understanding of the needs of the community, and she is the only person that actually mentioned minorities at all in her application. Understanding that it all interconnects to the bigger picture and overall public safety idea for the city. Overall, whoever, whoever takes this uh, seat, let them know that this will not be serving on a council where it is business as usual. We the people will not accept anything less than someone who represents all Virginia Beach residents. I get it. You have to get it how you live. You get your funds from different hands, but your primary obligation needs to be to the people. Again, I say all people. The city is great uh, for some, but not for all. It has the potential to be though. In 2020, we just took down the Confederate flags at the ocean front. Then in 2021, there's a double homicide with no resolution. You are asking to cater, uh, to, you're asking to enter the ring at an amazing time of change. There is a community of people watching how you move, operate, treat, and include these citizens of the city um, in the community at large. I feel the need to tell you all this to give you the opportunity to, take, to think long and hard about this position and why you want to serve in it. If you do not think that you will can hold this position and work for the betterment of the city for all citizens. If you cannot prioritize the citizens over tourists, 
if you put big companies over small business, if you give lip service instead of tangible change, then this is the opportunity to do what I wish some of, count, some of council would have done, stand down. Let only the person that is ready and willing to do those things have the position because anything otherwise will not be accepted. If, and if Carla decides that this, um, that she can um, uphold all of these requests from the community, then I think that she would be best for the position because unlike many on, on council, her plan for the city actually includes us. And that is a vital step in us moving forward for a more inclusive Virginia Beach overall. Justice for DeShayla Harris, justice for Donovan Lynch. And I will just go on record and say that for you, Mr. Mayor, to sit here and say that this council is the most diverse is appalling, really appalling. And it's, it's shocking and it's very telling. Thank you. The next speaker is Tim Salonic. And then Mr. Mc Gary McCollum. Hey, good evening. Hey, good evening. You guys got that up there? Um, good evening, Mayor Dyer. Uh, Vice Mayor, apparently I'm uh, nervous. Vice, Vice Mayor Wilson, City Manager Duhaney. My name is Tim Salonic. I live in the Ocean Park where the Brock Environmental Center and the Macon and Joan Brock Classroom are located on Pleasure House Point. I'm here to thank you this body, and in particular, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, Councilwoman Henley, Councilman Moss, Councilman Jones, for your vision on March 13, 2012, when this body voted unanimously to preserve most of Pleasure House Point. As you probably know, thanks to that inspirational highest and best land use choice, over 100,000 people have visited this cherished and inspiring parcel of land since only 2014. Many do not know that at the time, Pleasure House Point was threatened with development that was going to use similar stormwater te techniques as Asheville Park. We sincerely hope whoever you choose for the Lynn Haven seat also has the vision to make an inspirational highest and best land use choice when you will be voting on a unique parcel of land next to Pleasure House Point in Ocean Park. Marlin Bay Apartments is not the inspirational highest and best land use choice. You have an enormous opportunity to create development, economic development diversity, jobs, education, and fill a missing niche in Hampton Roads and Virginia to help mitigate sea level rise and to build a more resilient Virginia Beach and expand Visit Virginia Beach ecotourism opportunities on that parcel. October 19th, you should unanimously vote to deny not the firm Marlin Bay Apartments. Imagine. This body that embraced offshore wind, your green building criteria for new city buildings, your sustainable procurement directive, energy management for municipal operations directive, your embracing of energy efficient buildings tax credit, your Virginia Beach City Public Schools sustainability practices, including the environmental studies program on Pleasure House Point, your sea level rise resilience strategy, and the hiring of Dewberry. I'd like to add, years ago, I was in a city manager's office just after a Dewberry presentation at the informal session to this body and to members of city staff. When people were leaving, we sent the enormous stress in the room and the acknowledgement, fear, and shock on everyone's face when you learn it is going to cost billions to attempt to fix the land use choices of the past and attempt to create a resilient future for Virginia Beach, which as we well know, is second in the United States after New Orleans for negative impact from sea level rise. We ask that the Lynn Haven Council C person has the vision, as many of you have had in the past, and that there is indeed Thank you, a Herbert. ripple effect. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Grandchildren are watching. You got it. The next speaker is Gary McCollum. After Mr. McCollum is Diana Howard. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor Wilson, members of council. I'm Gary McCollum. I'm the founder of Do the Right Things. That's D-U-E, not D-O, but Do the Right Things. We're a grassroots organization created as an engagement platform with the public to share videos, photos, stories about overreach, injustice, police brutality, and government inaction. 
And as I was driving here tonight, I saw the breaking news alert, which I'm sure you saw as well, even though you probably knew last week, that Grammy Award winner, Virginia Beach native Pharrell Williams decided not to bring the festival, something in the water, back to Virginia Beach, a huge loss of revenue and prestige for this city. And as I thought about that alert, I thought about five years ago, my friend Bruce Smith, another nationally known native of Virginia Beach, who sent a letter to this body. I think Mayor Sessoms was sitting in the seat at that time. And he talked about the opportunity that this city had, and we didn't take advantage of it. And five years later, we see another nationally known Grammy Award winner, Virginia Beach native, saying, and to use his words, he says it's run by and with toxic energy. That was Pharrell's words, toxic energy. And the press said you guys begged him to bring it back. He's not going to listen to what you're saying. He's going to look at your actions. And so what I came here tonight to basically say is the actions that you're taking are not moving us forward. Let's, let's just talk about the fact your decision to continue to spend millions of dollars fighting an illegal voting system. Those are not the actions that are going to signal people to do business here. Let's talk about your actions, Ms. Ms. Vice Mayor, to, to speaking of something in the water, to not even be present when the event took place. And as I recall, you were in that seat at the time. So I, it, it's those kinds of actions, frankly, that send signals. And so what I stand here tonight to say is this. While those decisions took us backwards, you have an opportunity tonight to do the right thing, D-O the right thing. Let's appoint somebody who's not about the past. You know Mr. Branch's reputation. You've heard comments tonight, but you didn't need to hear the comments. You know Mr. Branch's reputation. Have, have you asked Mr. Branch uh, uh, why he uh, decided not to run for re-election the last time? Have you asked him that? Have you considered that? H have you talked about, uh, it was interesting to hear former Mayor Sessoms talk about the, uh, the rec center at SeaTac. I was just at SeaTac the other night. Uh, Councilman Holcomb, we were both there. It's amazing how that center looks compared to the one in Bayside. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please <laughs> do the right thing. Send the right signal. Blue. Thank you. Mr. Branch should not be put on this council. Holly or uh, Carla you, would be best. Thank you very much. Diana Howard, and then after Ms. Howard, we have one WebEx speaker. Okay. Hi, D. Good evening, everyone. How you all doing? Congratulations, Vice Mayor Wilson. Uh, I'm Diana Howard. I'm the chair of the Virginia Beach Tea Party, and I oppose Lyndon Branch being put on city council. We have enough beach district representatives. We do not need another brokering deals with developers down at the oceanfront. He toted that in his uh, application, his uh, creation of the tip and, and his experience creating all these things down here, and he wants to do more of that. We've already you know, spent billions for developers, for fountains, parking garages, the turnaround gateway to the hotel, the, the 31st Street Park that was given to a hotel, and we pay for the, all the um, entertainment down there. Closing off a street, the dead end it for uh, one particular person, and uh, development rights, we spent millions on development rights, gap financing, subsidies. We even put an extra $9 million in the CIP for tourism. So, and this all while we have um, done decades of backlogs in maintenance for stormwater that you want us to vote to raise our taxes for, right? To solve a problem that you already knew about years before, Matthew. So I think you should be thinking what message you are sending to the citizens of Virginia Beach. We all can't vote on district voting until next year. So we need to put somebody on council that is going to be for the residents of Virginia Beach in Lynn Haven, not the oceanfront, and not for Bruce and company. The last speaker is via WebEx, Robert Dean. Mr. Dean, if you will pause two to three seconds before you begin, you are unmuted, sir. Good evening. 
As a prelude to my comments, if this scenario happens in the future, please put the interview process out in the sunshine and not under the cloak of darkness known as executive session. There should be nothing to hide. My candidate recommendation to serve out the remaining term for the Lynn Haven District is Holly Clare, and my reasons are quite clear. To my knowledge, she's never had a personal or business relationship with any oceanfront cabal whose members are convicted miscreants. She has a comfortable knowledge of workings of government, having served with former Governor Bob McDonald and also as rector of a well-known Virginia University. I believe Holly's interests in our city are on the entire city, not just east of Burdenneck. I believe Holly has the integrity to make fair decisions based on digesting good data and not being told what and how to think by a hotelier at the oceanfront. I believe Holly does regard herself as a principal dedicated and honorable servant of the people and not one seeking to be served at the public trough. Being married to a retired Navy captain, Holly has the intrinsic and extrinsic knowledge of the military and its immense impact on our city, both financially and intellectually. This process is like the brown paper bags you see in the stores during Christmas under a sign which says, surprise gifts inside. <clears throat> well, we the citizens don't want any of that past nonsense with seen and unseen candidates. An unsuspecting public does not know that one of these candidates has an unseen, unsavory and sleazy past being seen wearing slick hair and press suits in this candidate's process. A candidate salivating to get his hands on the citizen's treasury for his own personal gain and that of the cabal as he did when he served on this council in the past. I know, I served with him. Tonight's decision should be seen as a defining moment for our city to stay on the trajectory of good, clean, and honest government, not returning to the days when one of these candidates was referred to as by our deceased Mayor Myra Obendorf as being part of the three amigos, three former members of this body who should, by their conduct, have given our city reason for including more turpitude clauses in all city contracts. Lastly, with the two residents of the city residing at the oceanfront, adding a hotel owner to this council would give the strip a 26% voting block on council. Not a good move considering the redrawing of the districts is in the hands of the courts. As a former Marine myself from a family of five Marines, Holly, as the daughter of a career Marine, knows the meaning of the Latin words Semper Fi, or always faithful. Mayor Dyer, while Holly's husband served in the Navy and her father in the Marine Corps, you and I know the Marine Corps is a department of the Navy, the men's department. She'll bring that decision, that distinction to these council chambers. There's what one clear choice for you to make by golly, and that is Holly. May God bless this constitutional republic and that for which it stands. I appreciate everybody that had the opportunity to take their time and come here and give your views. You know, it's a tough decision and the input helps. At this point, the chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions from the open meeting allowed by Section 2.23711A, Code of Virginia, as amended for the following purposes discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or uh, resignation of a specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body pursuant to Section 2.23711A1. And that is uh, specifically council appointments, council boards, commissions, uh, committees. Well, wait a minute. I'm, I got the wrong one here. Oh, Lord. You should be voting on a Oh, yeah, that was the previous one. Hang on one second. And that is specific to the appointment of the Lynn Haven seat. Okay? Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Vote is open to recess. Can we, can we take a, a quick break? I think that is in order. <laughs> <laughs>
for a motion to certify the closed session. So moved. I'm sorry, give me a second. Okay, vote is open. Actually, it's not. One second. Uh-oh. <laughs> now it is. Go ahead. All At this point, I will entertain a motion. I'm still waiting on votes for closed session. Oh, okay. Mr. Belushi, Mr. Rao. Sorry. Okay, uh, do we have a motion on the selection? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to nominate Linwood Branch. Okay, is there anyone else? Mr. Moss. Yes, I'd like to nominate Richard Maddox. Okay, we have uh, two folks. Okay, at this point, we will vote for uh, the, uh, the vote on. You want to do the red and the green? I, I would suggest that you just use the process you use for the vice mayor assign everybody a color and everybody okay. can vote once but that's up to the council okay uh, we go by color code that way it'll be contemporary uh cont contemporary the will spoke. of the body it, it'll be the will of the body How you, however you want to do it okay 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 oh, please any discussion no okay well I don't okay uh, okay M mr moss what do you have to say well, I guess we're making a nomination. Doesn't we get the opportunity to say why we're nominating the person that we're nominating? I think the public would like to know why we're nominating the person that we are. Am I, if I'm out of line, I will yield to the majority. I'll explain it after the vote. Thank you. Okay. Okay, how about this? We will do, Linwood Branch will be the green button, and uh, um, Mr. Maddox will be the uh, red button. Okay, the vote is open. By a vote of six to four, Linwood Branch has been appointed to serve the Lehman Haven District. Okay. okay. Any comments, Mr. Moss? Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate all 14 candidates who were willing to offer their time and energy. It was not an easy task to get the six candidates by the body, and it was even more difficult to get to the four candidates. We're all candidates. Okay, out, out of, sorry, please, you're out of order. And it was even more difficult, I think, for the body to get to the final four to be interviewed. Needless to say, I'm sure like many others, all the people that I supported didn't make the first cut and all of them didn't make the second cut. But I think that that kind of process did serve the body and the public well. Each of the four candidates had a robust team of supporters that energetic, energetically engaged the council members with emails and phone calls. And the engagement speaks well for the highly integrated networks that each of these individuals professionally and personally have. I shared my Facebook, my approach for filling the vacated seat in the Lynn Haven District. I respect that some of my colleagues have come to a different conclusion. I have tried to look forward where we were trying to go versus looking back to the special interest dominated past of this city of city councils in the past. I served with Linwood Branch and I speak from experience. We need to be moving forward. We didn't really need another representative who was such a vested interest in the oceanfront and who so often has been a proxy and an advocate for special interest at the resort area. My assessment of the public record, joined with my personal knowledge, is that Linwood Branch is not the best candidate for this position, but the voters in November in the Lynn Haven District will have the opportunity to pass their judgment. And then we'll find out what they would have decided versus what this body has decided. I have told people that I do not like this process. And I'm still pushing forward that the General Assembly would give us the ability to have a special election, just like we do for the Congress and just like we do for the House of Delegates. It comes vacant, the voters choose, because it's clear that the voters' judgment is much better than the judgment of this body, and it's the voters who should decide. And I think that all of us will be reflecting on this, but in the end, it's you who hold us accountable. It's you that have to decide next November how good a choice we made. I will ex ex respect the decision of the majority and will work with Mr. Branch here, but I will not concede that we have made the best choice this evening. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any, anyone else at this point? Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Branch, you have been selected by this council. 
Uh, would you like to just come up and uh, make a response? Uh, you know, the, well, the opportunity. I think that's not appropriate. Yes, it is. He hasn't taken the seat yet. He's not sworn in yet. Okay. I object. I, I think, Mr. Branch, you are allowed to come up and just make an acknowledgement. I will walk down right now. Huh? I'd just like to thank the council, and after hearing all the comments about the other candidates, there was some great competition, very impressive people, and uh, I got to uh, respect and, and appreciate them even more. Uh, as I said in my early interview, um, I want to come and work on some specific issues, workforce development, uh, community policing, the homeless issue, and I want to go to the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow morning and talk about the referendum and start that process. Thank you very much to the council members that supported me and the ones that didn't. I'm going to earn your respect and support also, I hope. Thank, Thank you, you very Honorable much. Mayor. Okay. <laughs> at this, okay, at this point, we will move forward, and if we uh, can go ahead and do the appointments. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, excuse me. For the audit committee, would like to appoint Mr. Guy Tower. Okay, uh, let, Rosemary, let's just hold, hold on a second for the crowd to clear. Okay, we're ready to go. For the Audit Committee, I would like to nominate Mr. Guy Tower. For the Oceana Land Use Conformity Committee, Mr. John Moss. Um, for the Hampton Roads Planning District, uh, Mr. Rocky Holcomb. Um, oh, and also for Oceana Land Use, uh, myself, Rosemary Wilson. For the Bike Wheels and tra uh, Bike and Trails Advisory, Mr. David Plum. For the Clean Community Commission, um, Lon Carpenter, Edna Bear Kalavani, and David Ledger. Uh, for the Deferred Compensation Board, Diane Portlock. For the Housing Advisory Board, Jacqueline Fagland. For the Minority Business Council, Carla Gregory, Herman Valentine, Cavell Molino. That's it. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, oh. Mm -hmm. that's right. Thank you. Uh, for the uh, May 31st, it'll be Ms. Sabrina Wooten and Mr. Michael Bellucci. Okay. Thank you. The vote is open. I'm sorry. It was down there. And I just missed it. Thank you. Thank you for catching it. By a vote of 10 to 0, you have um, appointed those as nominated by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay, at this point, any unfinished business? New business. Okay, we are adjourned and we will go into um, open dialogue. No. Give us just a second until they disconnect from the television. <laughs>